The number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, everyone knows, over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project, it hasn't been my own career, it's been Get Carl Famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald-headed mank twat. I well, let me tell you now, Rick, I've been out and about, and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkinson got a head like a fucking orange? Well, I've and I've been... had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But, he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and um, had a meeting. And uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action, <laughs> thriller, whatever? Because uh, you can provide any of it. I love that, that he's playing it cool, like yeah, you've yeah. come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilkin, the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always buy him. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, yeah. don't they? Just, just so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when if you just Randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that. That, that, that to me is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right, it doesn't work the same. Just just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking, and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, uh, so to anyway. Aristotle, he said, "Sit down. I've got an idea for you." Uh, Aristotle said, "Plato, what you go right." Just keep talking, and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more. It's building. Right. Okay. So who's who's you say? Who'd you say? So I said, right, I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, all right. Did they look at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? We, uh, he must be amazing. Yeah, he's Clive like... Warren, get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's get Clive me Warren. Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca de Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that come she from? She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> but hang on a minute, you can have... <laughs> You can have oh any God. film star, this is your fantasy <laughs> casting, yeah. and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for ten years. Oh, God! Why didn't oh. you choose, you know, a... Someone a who existed. ...or someone who's a oh big star? Oh, God! Okay. Clive Warren! Oh, God! Oh, so, God. anyway, starts off, and the people, you know, you're seeing into their lives from, yeah. like, the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. You know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, She's like, love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's... They're dead. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't... If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Carry on, so he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yes. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, she's fed up. She's devastated in that. Um, doctor says Clive's dead. Who's playing the doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of. Uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the 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 old the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says your husband's dead. She's like, oh god. What happens then is, he says, but listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out. Right, right. And, and, and a fact that I'd read that day, 
before the meeting. This isn't in the film now. This is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah. Okay. Luckily, I read a thing it. about how the brain can it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain running on half. So this is this was in my mind still. Well, half your mind, yeah. So I said, what happens is Morgan Freeman says, been working on this. You can run you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My, my husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you Oh, he's, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but yeah, he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. No, so, no, no. he's gone. No, no, he's no. by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, no, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, no, dead. no, 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 they're in a coma. No, they're, they're not dead. They no, come out of comas, don't All right, they? then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. So change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on, though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely going to die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? What? what, 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 what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. like, if anything happens to me... No, no, no. no. There's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. <laughs> right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive. And it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you cord. can link it up to the eyes and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going, well, we're going to try and do a brain. Like, Carl, um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms <laughs> and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> then what happens is they say, do you want half of his brain in your head? Half she, of his brain she in said, head. She says, definitely not. I'm having you struck off. She starts screaming. She calls the police. He gets arrested. Yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have, like, someone else's arm put on their body and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's only in a coma. Yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that co coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. It's right. like, look, you know, what, what are we going to do here? We can either turn the switch off yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would but you... So, why... so what he does... So what they do then, they're going to take half his brain... Half of his brain, take out it... half of hers, pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. But hold on. Well, no, no, wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. OK, OK, sorry. What happens is, he, he explains all this, so, I mean, this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film, but I'm just rushing I, you, I rushing just switched off, now. but, yeah. No, you wasn't. This, this bit would have you. Mm. So what... Well, what... I'd have actually left when I... I wouldn't have even gone in to see a film starring uh, Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is... She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And uh, he goes, well, what will happen is he's gone, but you'll you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, well, they have cornflakes, his bit of the brain will sort of say... Have a wheat bit. Have shredded wheat or yeah. whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry, so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought... When what do you mean, she... yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh, wait a minute, this is only Act 1. That's, that's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so, has it done. So what is, what, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone, yeah. but, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is it's all going well at the beginning, and she's... So she can't decide what so, so to wear. She's got, he, so she's had half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. OK? And, and Clive Warren's uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round... Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of... Uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, writing his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters, because... Yes. Otherwise, yes, it, it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? 
Can, I mean, what's what the I mean point is... of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. and Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's," right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I've just thought about or whatever." I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But People Carl, like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is kind of. If when when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, I've got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, 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 no, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I can also I... categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you're loving that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And, and I'd go, no! It's madness! I don't think you... It's wait. madness! All right, all right, all right. Let's... So tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah. Can we do lunch? Um, there may be, like, at the funeral, because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have, like, a funny bit where they stood around the grave and, like, there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, why is she laughing? Yeah. And she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, look at her head. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Looks like Stuff a on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> a little cameo for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, oh, it's quite funny, this. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. then you hit them hard. <laughs> it's, the most, oh, it's the most ludicrous idea for a film I've ever heard. Oh, right, it's, right, the, but... it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental have to case. Say, though, right. I have to say, though, I am hooked now. Mm. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is <laughs> she. Here's the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> he's going, oh. So he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip I've here. I've let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. So. He's, for, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing. So she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know... Where are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got... She's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie, or it's is it It's another blue? woman. Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone, what would happen sort is. of happen is... <laughs> oh, yeah, because we, we don't want to ruin it for them, because this will be filling the multiplexes in no yeah. time. No, it's, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in a head. But listen, let's I just get to Hang on a sec, though, Carl. I don't... Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening... No, come on. Come on, what's the end? waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right, so what I said was, maybe what happens is, his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right, how it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's taking over. That gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he overpowers her. So she is now. A lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think, hold on, why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's r relationships, it's the love of two brains. Right, OK, again, can That's anyone out there, can line. we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about... Cooked. Dave likes I love a food cut. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, Clive Warren on this food. Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm going to turn into a lesbian. People, shredded wheat. People like what they like, and it's Ooh. the same way. Like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman, and then is found out that she's got a twin sister, and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that when a cat dies, you buy another one. It's the same thing. You want that same. Yeah, but love you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, has there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Go well. I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs. Now I like cock. This is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't.
Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, OK, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day, what would you do with this? What would you, what would you make him do? What, would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could... You know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that would be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he, does he think the same way, look the same way, exactly dress the same? Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? That's incredible. <laughs> no, because... That is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But think about it, this other person's going, all right, thanks for uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, should I be leaving? Or, so how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because you're yeah, but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say... Yeah, it is a bit weird. But isn't you it? know the it, you truth, know. you idiot. Because How you would I know which one I was? So anyway, but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass I... him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks? Would you, uh, you know, you could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, "Oh, it wasn't me. It was me doppelganger." <laughs> <laughs> it can only. I wouldn't want it to be honest. It's a, it, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because hmm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> It's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was we... like that was like experiencing what it would be like there was two cars. <laughs> yeah, he was we, a discussion could, with himself. we could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? <laughs> does this mean? <laughs> does this mean though that I could just sit at home and not do anything, and just send me out on yes? And any, any, when he when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger. Then, well, is he? you're identical twins. Then you found out identical twins, and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that. How it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a, it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike. Do they just stuck together? You don't go. Oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That like normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just got their ass stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door, OK? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's, that's a leap of imagination here. 
And I've, I've, I've definitely got to, answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no <laughs> keyhole. Anyway near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So... They stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling. Really, he's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just going to lie when you ask him a question. If you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's going to lie? Yeah. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that <laughs> close? <laughs> Why? <have> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get on. It's illogical. Right, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So, no, hang on. Right, so you go up and you yeah. go, um... You right, go... hang on. Well, look, let's, let's imagine that... Let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys. OK? Right? But we have to, um... Uh, uh, we, well, me and, me and Steve are decide which doors we're guarding. OK? Right. Uh, I'm... Uh, look, look away, Carl. OK, right, then. so we've decided, OK, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some post for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right, question's right. coming. I got, you've got some post for God here, yeah? Uh. And it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish it, me. Is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. Y he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just, uh... Well, no, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, OK? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling, though, isn't it? This is what <laughs> lies. <laughs> As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, cos there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but yeah. I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, only one of the uh, the hottest uh, you know events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio! God. You can imagine. Did not know oh, what hit it. Oh God! Oh my! Imagine, were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Parker? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God! What did you do? Oh, what did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time I had diarrhoea. So that's uh, that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh and my. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's flat that they'd let out. And uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. 
And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often join the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And um, so, but they look really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free, and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. And the worst bit is that that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I tell you, I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was, she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was, because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And um, and so, of course, then on the whole flight, uh, as we're landing, I'm just, I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could. I mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in my in the bag in my hold all just in case it all went. Oh and I was no. really... Because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Of course, you know you know when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly, everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank. Go yeah. away! Yeah. Gonna, you know, just really... You know, with, your, with, your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way! <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who kind of even passes you, you just... Rawr. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time got into the t- and it all went off man alive it was it was grim but th- that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days because the first day i was i went for a walk everything with each is famous for just the beautiful beautiful people that gather there there's so many beautiful women in rio it made me angry i was angry that these women were so attractive and that you know none of them were even looking at me so but anyway i'm on the beach because i i was shopping and i needed a wee Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, we in the, in the sea. Just think of him on this beach, right? We're diary, yeah? Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they and are... And you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so... well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> in a well, litter tray. You see, there was a discussion about this, because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down and some people uh, some of my friends are saying just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away what a hell of a carnival well, and i think that's i'm against that i've always been against that against that in swimming pools everything you know so i so no, I think, i'm against pissing in swimming pools full stop it doesn't matter whether you do get in, <laughs> take your trunks down or let don't piss but in, what the about in the pool. sea yeah, well, fine, yeah. Fine, okay, right, fish, so, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to, trying to urinate, and I, so I kneeled, because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to, to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I, got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my, my back was to it, everyone, so no one saw. So, um... So I, so I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is. I've never seen it. Well, I, mean, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest well, of it, is it? I no? wish. <laughs> um, this, all, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But, um, so, I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And uh, now I was, sort of, I, was, I was trying. I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So suddenly, I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around. I can't see anything, because, of course, I had to take my glasses off <laughs> just to go in the sea. Because I, oh I didn't want to lose them. Oh, God. So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wa- genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach, but why? With everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my, because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving to my <laughs> friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach. <laughs> watching a pasty white man waving with his cock out. And, and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why would you have come running... Would you have come running in to help me? Oh, well, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. When, if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> He had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. Carl, I've got a couple of little facts for you, just to try and inflame your imagination. Go on. Sharks are immune to cancer. Are they? Yep. So what... How have they found that out? 
Well, I don't know, but... But I've, I've never heard of any fish having cancer, though. I haven't heard of a, a cod being ill. <laughs> so why are we focusing on that one? <laughs> Good point. OK. Stroking a spider can cause its hair to fall out. <laughs> What, because it's, it doesn't like it and it gets stressed out, or is it just that some people are rubbing too hard? No, I don't think it's they're rubbing too hard. I think it's something to do with... It, it, I mean, what sort of maniac is stroking a spider anyway? My mum did it once. Really? Yeah, not, not to a spider. Right. It was uh, just a little bee. <laughs> She'd been out, um, sunny day and that. Uh, got the washing off the washing line. Yeah. She was bringing it in. Little bee sat on the top of like the bed sheet or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, she's in the kitchen with it, and she goes, "Look at that little bee there." She started sort of stroking its stroking its head. And it loved it. <laughs> <laughs> How did it make it clear that it loved it? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't struggling. It was just sat there like because it must have been like a bit dozy. They get a bit dozy, don't they, in the uh, in the heat and that. Yeah. And uh, it just stayed there on the sheet, and she sort of stroked its head for a bit. And she had to put it out. It didn't go out. It didn't try and escape. It was like, you've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> that was that. was that. She sent it out. <laughs> she loved all that. She loved little flies and stuff. And we had Harry the house fly. What? She said, Harry the house fly. What do you mean? It's just a fly that always seems to knock about in one corner of the room. Right, it's the same fly, was it? Yeah, it was the same fly. How yeah. do you know it was the same fly? So whenever she saw a fly, she went, oh, look, it's back. Well, it's, we weren't letting him in. It's just that it stayed in. Carl, what makes you think it was a pet house fly as opposed to a different fly every day? Because it was always in the same place in the corner. But it could have been that something about that particular place that attracted flies rather than it was the same fly. Well, I'm never worried about it. It's not. It wasn't arming us. It's just. It just always hung about. But how do you know it was the same fly? How do you recognise it? We weren't worried about it. It, does, it doesn't matter, does it? If, if like, we're thinking another fly's getting a bit of free rent or something. Just, no, just let it let it stay. I don't understand what. But why? why no, no, well, no. I d right. Okay. You're in a house, right? There's flies. Okay. Not flies. Fly. What? Why do you think it was the same fly for all those years? Just because we haven't got loads of other flies. At no point was there a crossover period where there's two, and it's like, hang on a minute, he's trying it on here. <laughs> That's what I mean. It was always just one on its own. <laughs> and we just thought, leave it, it's all right. I don't know why... You, why are you suspicious? Why do you always think someone's out to do you? <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't know why you assumed, when you see a fly every now and again, that it's exactly the same fly. It the just fact was. That it's Harry. The one in our house was the same one. How do you know? <laughs> well, all right, I don't, but I'd, at no point did I feel suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that... Um, They've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they'd made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing... OK, this is this is incredible, Steve. Glasses. Can I can I take over? Hang here? on, let me just just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got... There's a small fly, and they've made it a pair of glasses yeah. so that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of... We're looking after everything now. Aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly, fly with a pair of glasses, glasses right? on. Yep. Right. It was about a one-sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had, as an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses someone to fit on a house. They put it on there and they're taking a picture of it and it's on uh, display. At no point was it actually, because the fly had bad eyesight, the fly was presumably dead, it was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you'd drawn the uh, glasses on there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he believed it like, there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, my, God, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. What, what do you think of that, though? But they did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just, it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When no. you, you know, We are, we're always doing it. 
we're always trying to help people out. Instead of just going, you've been dealt a duff card, cope with it. <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. <laughs> We've had a few emails about the old shows. People came into them late in the season. Did I not tell you this? We we've had an e we had an email from an Inuit. Really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd mentioned this. Have we not mentioned this before? No. No, it was an email from a guy who said, uh, "I think. Well, I don't think he lives. He lives in Canada, I think, or somewhere else. I apologies for if I'm getting that wrong. But I think he told, he said he was half Inuit and he listens to the show. Half Inuit. Mm. See, that's interesting because I think I'm mean, so remote. I know I'm probably wrong now, but I think those are so remote that I can't think where they're meeting people who aren't. <laughs> that are also Inuit, yeah. Oh, and who's going, you know, other societies are going, I'll tell you what, I'm fed up, there's no action here, I'm going to the frozen tundra, I'm about to meet <laughs> someone there. Yeah. Where do they meet? Do they do online dating? What, what, probably a lot of online stuff. What do you put as hobbies? Fishing? <laughs> yeah. Is it skinning stuff? <laughs> skinning stuff, yeah. What will stuff to skin? Uh, you know, seals. Seals, yeah, sure. That's about it, isn't it? Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why aren't seals going, do you know what, it's cold, I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time, what have you, and I'm getting a club on the head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say, like, if, if seals died out, right? Would 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 that be a problem? We've done this. We've been through this before, Carl. Everything has a knock-on effect. Even a seal, that sort of in between something already. It's between a fish and a <laughs> and a dog, dog, isn't it? I knew you were going to say dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. What do you think evolution does? Do you, just, fish I, to I'll dog. Never understand it. Maybe. What do you mean it. it's between a fish and a dog? I'm just saying it's. It so was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the the water, I imagine, and then got streamlined. And it, I, I mean, it's between a fish and a dog. But why not have one and the other? Why not have, like, you know, you've got a dog, you've got a fish. No, it's Anything not between a fish and a dog. It's not between a fish and a dog. I don't know what between means. Well, I don't know what... This I... is it again about saving everything all the time. What is it doing? <laughs> What's it doing? Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> Out of all the people in the world to have a chat with, do you know, um, what's his face? That German doctor. Which one? The guy that, that displays the human body? Guns, someone. Guns right. Traven or something. Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, I don't, is he, is he a proper doctor? Because it's just that it's always, I mean, I could cut a body up, I never see him sort of put it back together. Is, is anyone keeping an eye on him, sort of going, well, who is he, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is a proper doctor. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't answer everything. Like, he doesn't say, I, I don't understand why the intestines have to be that long. I don't, I don't know why it just can't go from the throat to the belly, exit, straight dark line down, out the arse. You must know. Well, no, because uh, the, the way he, he dragged it out and it was, like, miles long. Yeah. Pointless. No, it's not pointless. It's just, just, have a, just have a straight... Do you know what no, I mean? Straight it's what you're talking about. Again, the evolution sort of worked this out for us. It really works. I don't think you're going to improve on it. What I mean is that's probably that long because years ago they were eating dinosaur and that might have took a lot of indigestion or something. I don't know how, how chewy it was. It might have been quite fatty, dinosaur meat, and it needs to go through all that. Now, we're eating, like, yoghurt. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we, don't, we don't need anything that, you know... Is, is, is doing that much work anymore. All the food is mashed up. And in aura, right? <laughs> all her food is mashed. <laughs> right? She doesn't have to chew anymore. She's got teeth, but she doesn't need them. And that's how. how... <laughs> She's got teeth, but she do not need them. No, but that's well, how she we're moving on. intestines removed then. Well, no, but this is that what I'm saying. That's our other problem, wouldn't we're, it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at it on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other. So they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, 
you have my arm, right? And he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were bored so what, they did that for no, what, 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 like, what doctor's doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and... No, 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 no. No, doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm and I'll take another... They don't... Doctors don't do that. What sort of practice is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're saying. No, but we've... Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. No, <laughs> yeah. no, sign this. Pay, if you sign this, you can give my consent. <sighs> but, but we, you know, it isn't. Oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just they do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it. And, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like. Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, to make them look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of... There's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like, like this. All right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprise me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his his, his tackle, right? Mm -hmm. His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were, like, looking at it, going, yeah. Um... Doctor, I don't know if he started, like, rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down. He's thinking... <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different, though, isn't it? Well, That's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've. I assume they they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, t t near your testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. But... That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke. He had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on. Um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that anyway. He was, he was fed up because he loved his meat and his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that. Oh, he wants some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate, just about to tuck in, and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. <laughs> what? No, it's some, I know, it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was Dude, growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of, it was it was coming out, waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> it was sort of dying again. It, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from it's uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he wasn't allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there. So it's actually sitting there and throwing. Why? I'll tell you what I'd have done if I'd have had some cancer in my throat. I'd go, <coughs> there you go. Rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Um, <coughs> he choked to death on this thing, and the wife was like, "Oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all." Just That's listen, to your, story. listen to your it's, it's all. There's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant.
OK, then listen. Right, I'm going to... I've found some things that I think will interest you, and I want your first thoughts on these, OK? Now, these are facts that I've sourced, mm. OK? What's the, what's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal some facts. Some of them. I don't, mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff, but a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just, they just do. OK, then, here you right. go. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does it's... it does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? Rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much... Is it, is, is it getting threatened a lot, is what I mean? Well, no, cos it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours. It's got the colours that say... It doesn't want to be eaten. It doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh, I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't You don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Cos now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out, and then they'll attack it, and then it'll turn around and bite and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite. It's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's... I mean, who's going to eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sapa Blur! <laughs> you have killed me... And 999 <laughs> of my friends. But why... Why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, if it licks you or whatever. But no, look, it it, not seem... if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not going to lick it. It's not, it's not going <laughs> to happen. I, don't, I will not be licking a frog. <laughs> so it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point, am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He doesn't, he doesn't, he wants them to hide. He doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, Do you the, understand? Fittest, it means the fittest gene pool. And the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. You think that everything, slugs... Cats are all somehow their their ambition is to be like us or to to have the but, attributes but, like us that they can speak, they can talk, they can think, only, they can act. I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times, they're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. he's I'm thinking of Planet of the like Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog, right? And that's all we got left. Um, it's called Fluffy. And, like, my gran looked after it in a way that... It was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died. We get left it. My dad's like, oh, bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out if it wanted to go out. It got covered in oil. It used to go under the car and everything. So it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle to just being a bit of a wreck. It got it by a car, it ran sideways, like a crab, and all that. <laughs> In the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah, but a dog dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, jackals or, or and wolves. Yeah, but change it. All I'm saying is, change it. Take away the dog thing. 
I mean, that lizard thing you've got... Salamander. It's, it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it does not. That, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way, you know, it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed it a cricket now no, and again. It, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter, because it's in your flat. It is in Carl's family. It's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now, it knows more now than it did when you got it, because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. It's no. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park. <laughs> it's on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, you, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right. I've Pavlov, been... at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it, and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this, and wandered <laughs> off, <laughs> <isn't it>? Pavlov, <laughs> yeah. there. Brilliant. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov's first. We could do uh, um, Freud. Give us, you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud? The father of psychoanalysis. Right, come on in. I don't know anything on him. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, it looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour, there's nothing, you can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, w I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't do. Try and do. catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, say like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly, yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's, that's mainly sticking in the, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That, that those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, I but th I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen. Change the colour of co concrete. Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right? Stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> I love this public information <laughs> for chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh, God. Stay green, stay in the woods, <laughs> stay safe. Good night. Oh, God. Um, right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give... What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think it should be killing... Uh, I reckon 10. 10, because... You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got 1,000 in his lifetime, like he's got 1,000 to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think he doesn't really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. <laughs> but I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it, how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? I don't know <laughs> if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, Carl. There's a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control you, the when, brain? Well, like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some uh, rice, uh, kidney beans. Uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. 
Your so brain did something that. went an onion. Was it yeah. Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went. You forgot something. Yeah. I I didn't think I'd forgot. I was no, no, you that. are your brain. No, no, <laughs> but don't you understand? The brain, my brain was in. I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready then, to go and get well, the rice. Yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what? So you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear. Then from it, it was just like it was onion. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket. I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. And suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion. Yeah, I had to get the paper out. So you what I'm saying is, who's, this, in, the, who's in charge? The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing? But Who's in that's charge? just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and then you remembered the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, oh, the, the you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain... Your... <sighs> How does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes. Do you mean well, you give it information? Well, it's, if I, it, if I sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that then, there's two yous. It's this thing that there's. There's, there's this, Carl and Carl's brain. Yeah, right? there's, there's not. There's not a duality in this. If you, if if you go if you go come on come on now think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's it, it's not. There's not two people in there having an argument. Come and come on, brain. And the brain's going. Oh, don't you start? I was thinking then. And the other thing's going. Brain, onion. And the brain goes. Carl, onion. You are your brain. If you are anything, you are you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. Does that answer your question, Carl? Uh, what do you think of oh, then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> you know, whilst you've been working on that, I've been travelling about a bit. Mm. Went to um, Dorset, right? A uh, nice beach there. Uh, and you know those huts you get? Like a hut on the beach and you... Oh, where you get changed. You can get changed in it, but they, they're better than that. It's like you can put a telly in it. Uh, sofa, if you want. Oh, you don't mean the Victorian changing yeah, hut? Yeah, you mean like things. It, it's sort of bigger than that. Yeah. And um, we're walking down there, and there's a really sort of big fat family in one of them. There's about four of them, and you could tell that they'd never had a game of anything. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. just sit down there eating ice cream, looking at the sea, and what have you. And the weird thing is, the little fat kid, the youngest one, who must have been, I don't know, about eight, he was really fat. To the point of you couldn't see his neck. Yeah. And he sat. He sat at the front of his mum and dad and his older sister. He sat there and he had a frisbee. And I thought, look, they, they don't want to play with him. I mean, that's that's an active game to play, isn't it? Yeah. A frisbee. As we got closer, he was just using it to eat Maltesers out of. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, even again, you know, the one active thing he's got, he's using it to eat out of. <laughs> yeah. Extraordinary. And that just sums up what people are like you know, when it comes to keeping oh. fit and activities. Oh, that's fantastic. One thing I've, looked, I've noticed, because I occasionally go to the gym, and you know those guys who work out constantly to give themselves extraordinary physiques? Just, they, you know, they're on the trip, they're on the weights, and they're really... You know, I notice in the summer particularly, those guys cannot wait to get their shirts off. Yeah. Everywhere you see, they're walking around. If they've got a good good torso, they are walking shirts off. Even, I think, if you go to nightclubs, I notice there's always one guy who's thinking, well, I have put so much work into this body, I have got to get my shirt off on the dance floor. A vest, yeah. You know, and it's it comes straight a, off. A brand new tattoo. I'm not covering that up. Exactly. I've paid a lot for it. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we were saying about bodies. I can't remember why we were talking about it. We've got to a point in science now that you can change your head. Right. No, well, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. It, it was a program on. It was done in the fifties or sixties where they stuck a, a monkey's brain on a stick and had it wired up and it still worked. Right. Right. Okay. And that was in like the sixties or. Right. Okay. Well, so, to well, to, to say to change a head makes no sense at all, because just, if you put a, a a different head on a different body, you're changing the body. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what I'm about to say to you, though. What? That's what I'm saying. That I'd be more confident if. I had someone else's body, because if anyone dissed it, I can go, oh, no, it's bad, isn't it? But it's what not are you mine. talking about? Well, it's, it's like, say, um... As opposed to someone else's head? Yeah. 
Well, well it won't be me, would it? The head is me. Well, of course it is. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, so what do you mean? Me. You'd be happier having someone else's body. What, than your own? What I mean is, say if um, you're wandering about, uh, for, some, for some reason there's an incident, you have to take your top off and that, and everyone's looking at you, right? And you're a bit sort of, you know, you haven't got the muscles and that, you haven't got the six-pack. All right. Uh, which isn't that nice anyway. I don't know why that's become a nice thing, really, seeing the insides of you. You might have grown... <laughs> I mean, not... I know I came up with the see-through skin idea, but it's it's a bit weird, isn't it? You can see stuff. No, no, it's the muscle in front of the... No, it's not. Sometimes it is. You can it's, see, not the, like, it's not the tubes. outline of your no, organs. No, you can't see tubes. You can see tubes and veins and stuff. Well, you can see veins. Yeah, well, I don't want to see that. That's why we've got skin over it. Is well, stop I mean. looking at naked men, then. Well, you know, but sometimes you can't help it because it's been hot, and it, like you say, there's people walking around with vests on and that. So anyway, what I'm saying is, say if some incident happened, I'm walking about with my top off. Right. Girls are laughing at me, right? Why? Don't know, they might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. So, they wouldn't look at your body, they'd all look at your head. So, so what I mean is, yeah. rewind that, right, and imagine all that happens again, but I've, I've got someone else's body. Right. Whose right? body? Uh, just some fella who's died and, I, and my body was injured and they said, we've got a new body in. You right. can have it. We'll yeah. stick your head on it. Yes. Yeah. Now, say if... They're if, laughing at you. Uh, they're, they're laughing, laughing at the body. They're laughing yeah. at the body. Yeah. But at least I'd be able to sort of go, I know it's a mess, but it's not mine. At least I don't have to claim ownership. So, so all of this extraordinary technology that can make a head, put one head on another person's body, so you can go, ah, it's not my body. No, no. But, and but it's not your own. I'm not being funny, though. So if you have a body transplant, right, and you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked, you look down, yeah. lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body? Yeah. No, cos they're not my hands either. So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been away filming in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been hot, right? It's been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What have you been doing, though? Getting to see the place, having loads of walks. And that, I like to have walks. You know, watching what <laughs> like people do. Like a dog. Do. <laughs> yeah, when when he jumps off the couch and starts <laughs> exactly. scratching against the door, Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> it's, it's, walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk, you've got no other clutter going on around you, and right. you just think about a lot of stuff. And you know, like like say with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so so while we've been filming, you've been watching insects. Yeah, just seeing because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's. Keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried about? Loads of Steve, you won't be laughing like that if you'd, if you'd watch them. Because th <laughs> they do some weird stuff and that, yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack? Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened? I'd, I'd been Did in it the... clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd were sort... there some other little bee paramedics? No, no. I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at you know uh, caterpillars knocking about, uh, <laughs> butterflies and stuff. So I was sort of. So, aware. so when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, "Carl, don't you waste the day. I want you to do some constructive stuff." <laughs> but but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than like most of the time. And I come out of the park. Just crossing like a, a sort of a busy road and what have you, and I saw this bee to the right of me, sort of in the air, and it was a big one, and I was a bit like, oh, let's watch that, and um, it just fell, it fell from the air in front of me, and it was it on the pavement. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? And I, I, I looked at it for a bit, and it was really still. Gave it a little kick, just to see if there was any movement. Nothing. Stone sort of, what's the saying? Stone cold dead. <laughs> 
Stone Cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I like the th fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. He'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. <laughs> My uh, God, it's a giant walking orange. <laughs> Every dream has come true. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks, stress. <laughs> you put it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... And always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee. Oh. So what did you... It fell to the floor and you, you instantly... You just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it. No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was nothing. <laughs> and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already. It's just... Rigor mortis had set in. Set in. Did it put you in a bad mood for the day? Because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. That's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. But when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, it's Maybe weird. they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching Ants. You mentioned Ants. <laughs> uh, I've had a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you, you say it like it was a dead. garden party. <laughs> yeah, well, but but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. They go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one... <laughs> If you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards, and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it for. There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? It hasn't got eyes, has it? You just look at it, it, it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't... Th I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> That's a rule. If we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> ah. I just was reading something about an octopus. That's that's like a killer octopus. Mm -hmm. And it annoyed me that this was knocking about now. Because <laughs> I didn't know I thought they were quite friendly. <laughs> Whenever you see them in cartoons and that, they're always happy, aren't they? And then suddenly, like, they've, they've sort of brought the whole sort of uh, creature down. Do you know what I mean? No, what do you mean? Well, just, just you know, when, when you see them in films, they, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one, that's on the... It, it, was, it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at, like, other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's... Uh, yeah. There's uh, some octopus that's in the sea, uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to, like, threaten it. It just spits in the water, and if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm... I, mm. So, in a way, it's good knowledge, because... I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway, because it's full of stuff like that, but that's just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gauzing everywhere... <laughs> Uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. OK, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it, OK? A crab. How would I change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would I, would I change anything? 
Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. So but why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. And so they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yet they're still here, they're still doing that, they're still designed that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on Earth? Yeah. Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes. <laughs> if, if a jelly, honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. But like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like they've got eyes. You can make eye-to-eye -eye contact with them. <laughs> what you a jellyfish, making? what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? You say, I don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. In terms of um, design and everything, and uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet, yeah. and everything was lined up in a row, and they said, right, we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man, here's woman. Here's a dog, here's a cat, here's an octopus, here's a... I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Say if, if everything was at the same size as us, what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula. Yeah. And a tiger, what would happen there? To a, a 15 stone tiger versus a 15 stone tarantula. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine the 15 stone tarantula. Right, so it's just weird that, isn't it? It's a good job that they're small. Yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? 15 stone. The biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or something. It's like big that. though, isn't it? Yeah, and that's about as big as they get. He's so I wouldn't worry that. about it. Mm. <laughs> Again, based on nothing, he queries it's not, you. But it's like fish, isn't it, how they say about a goldfish? Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and mm. stuck it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well-known thing about goldfish. No, it's goldfish. not a well-known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish would only grow to its surroundings anyway. So... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven-foot fish in a bath, it just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back off holiday... Don't talk shit. It's what was it eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she went to Mars and back. <laughs> Ted, you're not going to believe this. Come up here. Well, how many fish do you see that have naturally died? It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? Well, most things that don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird, though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a... You know, it's a jungle out there. No, worse than the sea. The sea is, like, full of... Uh, you've got an enemy round every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love it! I love it. It's like a warning to crabs. Exactly. And young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you ever seen the programme Inside the Actors' Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions which is based on a French series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to, uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions. just interesting to see what your response is. And, you know, answer them quickly. You don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite curse word? Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's... But it you can... wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Well, yeah. knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she'll, she'll, she sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, though, if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You were on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And, it, and you just see it start spitting at you. Poison. What yeah, would you say well, to it? Well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it. <laughs> and I'd say, knobhead. 
I would. Uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its <laughs> it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> you kicking and coming in the bed <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh God! Oh, okay, you fucking eight-legged shit. I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. You, I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking, fucking cunt yeah. of a mollusk. I'll just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face. Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, right, emergency and that. Had a uh, tube put on my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in. To be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's, it's like at Zookeeper going, oh, that sloth move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true, because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying... And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, God carry this. God almighty. So. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed... And they, they, you know, they would say they were unconscious. So they yeah. don't whinge about it. They get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> <laughs> so you rushed to hospital. So tell the, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain, and I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been. Wrestling with Ricky and that, because mm. you don't know what damage is being done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. did it got badder, did it? So then got I thought I, I, oh, I, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony, looking on the internet, looking for a sort of still solutions. looking at monkey news. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just I just put in like belly ache and stuff, and they were saying me loads of different things, um, and I. What I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The coldness got rid well, of like, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like... A witch doctor who happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of fifth-century remedy <laughs> yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. <laughs> yeah. uh, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were at this sort of old cold... <laughs> <laughs> They're old cold. What? I don't know what this is. I, mean, it's, I love this idea that he's, he, uh, he's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah. She goes, oh, good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old oh, cold. Yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh... <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Badness, it's, uh, uh the, yeah. the history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just, you know, it, if... So, if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first? You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass and that, it holds the cold. But we're not smoking our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's madness. A plate's not going to work. A pla Famously, a, pla a plate oh doesn't God, work. Oh, God, no! Oh, God. So you put a, a, uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any... No, you that, that, ever, that yeah. didn't work. So I uh, called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctor's then. Good advice. So A lot of people have done that straight away, <laughs> as opposed to going through the plate. <laughs> ashtray. ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to hospital and he went to hospital and he said, Have you got an ashtray? This is no smoking. <laughs> so anyway, so then we get in a cab and what have you go there. I have an X ray. His voice is even more boring than usual, it's isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Fuck me. And they put me on a drip and everything. Give me some morphine and stuff. And found out that I had kidney stones. So that's why I was in hospital. And they get them out by... I can't even... I don't know what's gone on, to be honest. Oh, I've on. got some tube inside me. 
from my kidney to my bladder. That's helping me stuff get about. And so there's a little tube up the end of your knob into your... Yeah, it's not there now. It's right... It's high up. Right. So it's high up between my kidney and my bladder. But why didn't you have the thing where they go in the side? You had the choice to... Because I said to the doctor, I said, I'm not a doctor. I said, what do you <laughs> he think... He went, stop putting the, yourself the, down, Carl. Yeah. Said, we need you in the operating <laughs> theatre now. He just said, you know, I said to him, what, what should I have done? Because he said, if you want, go home um, and we'll get you in again or something. Or something like that. And I said, no, I might as well have it done properly. Have it done now whilst I'm here. Sorry, the choice was have it done properly or go home. It was it was something like that. He said he said there's there's something you can do, and I said oh flush it out. Um, no, because it's too big. It's something like seven millimeters. And it was it's basically because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. So uh, anyway, I said, what do you think I should have done? And he said, tube up the knob. And I said, mm, not my favourite one of the choice, but if you if that's what you think. So he said, yeah, have that. He did me little diagrams, which didn't help. He was, like, showing... <laughs> How big like, did he draw your knob? Uh, sort of normal size. Yeah? Was yeah, it? It was all right. You weren't offended by uh, Well, he wanted into detail. It's just, you know, more the tubes and stuff in your yeah. bladder and your kidney. What was your ball bag like? Did he draw that? He didn't do that bit. He left that bit out. OK. Right. But, um, but he <laughs> said, we'll just pop that up there. And, uh, and then that's when Ricky turned up to visit. Yeah, came in laughing at me because we sat there in like me underpants and stockings. <laughs> in yeah, stockings? Yeah. Yeah. Why were you He was to there. Sleep? No, he wasn't in bed. He was sort of out of bed with his little drip, right? He had his little boxer shorts on, just sat there, right? In his pants, right? And he had stockings on. Yeah, because they stop clots or something. They put them on your legs. It's like, you know, when people have got big veins and they go on a plane. Right. Yeah. Uh, you said you're not a doctor. <laughs> no, but I've, I've seen it, because Suzanne's mum did it, and it was she put them on ridiculously early, like three days before we were going away. And <laughs> she'd, she'd never been away before, and it, everything was, like, over the top. Do you know what I mean? She's like, I best put them on. And, uh, so, so I put them on, and they, like... I don't know what it is. It's something when you're in... When you're under, your blood doesn't move about the same. Right. And it can clot up in your leg. So you wear these tight tights. And I came in to cheer him up, didn't I? Yeah. Was that a nice cheery experience, him coming in? Uh, I had a headache at the time. I think I was a bit stressed out. <laughs> well, he's uh, just a man you want at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's weird how it suddenly all happened quick. And uh, I woke up and there was an Irish woman over me going, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, oh, it's stinging a bit. She said, I'll give you some more morphine. And I sort of put my head up to have a look at my tackle because I wanted to see... If it was still there. ..what, what was attached to it. Do you know what I mean? Because they said something about they might leave some string hanging out of it. So they can pull the tube out. It makes you talk. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had a, I had a look for that. Couldn't couldn't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, but as you put the morphine in, all the muscles in your body go funny. My head just collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. I'm in agony now. And uh, are you in agony right now as we speak? Yeah, certain. Uh, but it does make you think now. Do you know what I mean? Like life and everything. I mean, it's weird how it's all happened in the last month from seeing that bee sort of die. No, <laughs> no, well, not really. No, you, no, 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 no. This is not a near-death experience. It is you had a routine bit. operation to remove kidney stones because you don't drink enough water. No, I know, but this what, is not a shark attack. Yeah, but it's all it's all uh, life-threatening. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to fill out forms, would you? Saying if everything goes wrong, Suzanne can have the house or whatever. They keep taking your heartbeats and stuff. Mm. And your blood pressure. I don't like knowing about that. I just like leave it. It's happening. Don't be messing with it. Stop measuring it. <laughs> Stop measuring it. No, do you know what that's I mean? Same with it's, the knob. It's, it's that thing of, <laughs> of like they put that. Thing that's on. what the anaesthetist was doing when you were under, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was comparing the diagram to the actual thing. Oh God. What is the closest thing? T sort of living. That's nothing. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's, like, the closest... Like, do you know, at some point, something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't... No, I don't understand what you mean. Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's so, right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say, say, like, when you look at a, a stick insect... Right. You go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick 
to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But they, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's, it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> what I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like... They, they, they sort of look like a leaf. Yeah, there are insects that, that 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 have evolved to look like a leaf. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No, what? at no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> at no point did a beetle shag a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it. it that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but it what, looks like a leaf. But then, how does it meet? How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's not like they, uh, it, 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 the, you know, um, a stick insect will be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. <laughs> this club's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great, slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. Well, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in the, OK, in the you've last, moved on from In the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis, where he got, like, a, a half a million pounds grant from a university, and I said, well, Pilkin just seems to... He's done ants and he's done bees. Um, he's, he's followed ants. <laughs> Apparently, they're not doing anything. Some of them are lazy. Um, he will grant him another uh, half a million pounds. Um, he's been working on it for a year. <laughs> um, please welcome Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Carl, what have you found? Well, even though pigeons have wings, they walk a lot. Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said uh, um, coconut milk can be used uh, as, as plasma, but yeah. I have had that verified because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. Uh, well, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort but, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well... Uh, well no, 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 but that's, that's not, not being open-minded. Open-minded open isn't uh, believing everything you hear. Do You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it. A lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this. What about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form. But uh, according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? <laughs> But we, but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. If he was above a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite Yeah, quite yeah but big, exactly, really. but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. They're, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. There's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where you got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, you... no, the uh, lion's at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in a, in a bad situation. Don't talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God, you know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right, so there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? they would what do you mean? They would have been on another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big, big, it's big, it's a big boat. Uh, how long, what was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It's a couple of weeks. Yeah. Two, two of every species, Carl, 
How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big. Because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, their necks there, two yeah. elephants, and it just and, and it's just like it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on. But when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you are you saying that you won't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question not, of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was swimming recently. I do a lot of swimming. And I've never quite mastered my front crawl. It's never quite nailed the breathing because it's quite tricky, isn't it? You know, you've yeah. got to breathe at the right moment. And um, so I'm in the swimming pool in the local gym, and there's a guy bombing up and down, really doing a great forward stroke. So I uh, waited till he came up and sort of went, uh, <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Um, <clears throat> I was just watching you when you were doing your front crawl. I was really impressed. Could you just watch me? When I do mine, and tell me if I'm going wrong. Why would you go to a man? I know, and that was what I. Th that was the problem. Is only as I was saying it did I realise what it sounded like. I've just been watching you yeah. swimming up and down. I was really and, impressed. And you're both in speedos. <laughs> both in speedos. You know, I'm. I'm got the goggles on, um, prescription goggles, so I can see when I'm, when I'm swimming. But why do you need them? There's nothing in a pool to look at. It's not like you're scuba diving. There's well, nothing. Hold it's on. Just... Clearly, there is someone to look at in a pool. Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't checking. Well, I was checking him out, but I was checking him out for for swimming tips. And he just mm. looked at me when I asked him, "Can you just watch me and offer me any tips?" And he Steve, just looked at me like I was just that mental. Is, that is a, such a strange thing to say. Can you just watch? Me? I don't know how you had the nerve to do that. Well, I, it was innocently motivated. Well, I know it's innocent, but what a strange thing to go up to someone. And but what with the civilization we live in, where we can't just ask our fellow man to help us out with our forward crawl? But we're in a society where we can't. But you know that it's a strange thing to say. But, I, but sometimes it's nice to just think, no. Do you know what? I'm not going to fall into the trap of I thinking agree. he's immediately going to think I'm gay or but that I'm chatting him up. I'm just going to ask him to do me a favour. There's nothing wrong with that. What if he said, yeah, it's just good, yeah. Um, do you mind coming and help me with um, my plastering? But it's not the same. He's in the swimming pool. He's yeah. there in the pool. He's swimming up and down. He's, you know, yeah. it's not no skin off his nose to just offer a bit of kindly advice. If your car's broken down in the in the middle of nowhere and someone drives by, you know, it's a generous thing to do. Just stop and maybe look under the bonnet and help them out. I agree, but I don't see how it's any different. And in the end, he did. And all he asked was that I wake him off. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, as you're aware, you've obviously got many celebrity fans, and you've also got a new fan, Warwick Davis, who is the short actor that many people will see in films like uh, Return of the Jedi. He also is in Harry Potter. He's three foot six, and Ricky and I worked with him recently. And uh, far from asking us about the uh, many celebrity names that we've worked with, the only person he was interested in talking about, of course, Mr. K. Pilkington. He wanted to meet you, Carl. Yeah. Well, is he is he all right to get on with? Was well, why wouldn't he be? Um, just because sometimes when people aren't normal, it's What's just... It? Sorry? No, I just mean when, when someone... Like, I've met a few little people in my time. The one that I, I, I met, I met a little fellow once, and he was all right. He got drunk really quick. Uh, but he was all right, but it took me by surprise. Only because, like, like I've said about when I met Steve for the first time, it's only that same thing. And then if I lived with the little fella, I'm sure we'd get on a storm. When you met There's Steve a TV show waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Things wear off. That's that's like the world, isn't it? And it's the same with the little fella you're talking about. First time I see him, it, I'd, I'd be a little bit like, oh, what do you say? Whereas once you get to know him, I'm sure he'd, he'd be a lovely little fella. <laughs> I don't know where to start, Steve. But Warwick asks, really, um, what are your thoughts on short people? particularly in entertainment, because, of course, they've, uh, throughout the ages, made an appearance, particularly in fiction. Tom Thumb, of course, uh, the Oompa Loompas. What do I think of them? He's just wondering, you know, I suppose, what your take is. Um, they're all right. I mean, when I was on jury duty, every day I'd sort of see one pop in and he'd be sort of struggling getting on the chair. And he'd sort of, you know, he wasn't struggling in a way that he felt uncomfortable. He'd obviously climbed a lot of chairs in his time. And this was just another one. And... 
I, what, watching him, it just makes you makes you think. You go, you know, I should appreciate that I don't have that problem every time I have to sit down and what have you. But I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's that bad. If I had to pick being really tall or really small, I'd go for the really small one because, you know, it's it, the world's a more interesting place for him, isn't it? Everything's bigger. Do you know what I mean? We go to New York and go, wow, look at this. And they go and they go, oh, yeah. do you know what I mean? Everything's a lot bigger. Everything's more amazing. Food portions. Everything's a bonus. So out of the two, I'd be small. And maybe that's what I'd chat to Warwick about for a bit, just to get to know get to know him. Brilliant. It's a shame in a way that he's not being able to pop in. I'd like to hear that conversation. But I've got, um, you know, speaking of like weird stuff and that, I've got a new... Well, we uh, weren't, but go on. No, I've got a new book. Do you know I had that Freaks book? The top 50 Freaks. Got a new one sent to me. Really? Uh, yeah. And do you know, like, everything um, normally has a name. So, like, if it's uh, the two-headed fella, you know, they're all nicknames like that, aren't they? There's, They've got two nicknames, I imagine. Uh, but this new book I've got, right, yeah. on the colour of this one, it's got, like, a woman with three breasts, right? And she's called the, the three-breasted woman, as you'd expect. <laughs> The one face. Why is she posing nude, though? That's what I want to know. Tart. Well, she looked happy. <laughs> and there was a, a fellow with, like, one, one face but two bodies. One face but two bodies. <laughs> one face, two bodies. What do you mean, so one weird. face, two bodies? <laughs> Surely you want a head, two bodies. Uh, head as well, but it was mainly the face. That was weird, because he looked fed up. <laughs> sort of... What are you talking about? How what can you are you have talking a face about? without a head? How can you have... What do you mean? How did it join to the neck? No, it did, it did have a, a head... But the fact is, it, it was weird that I had one face to me. What do you mean? Well, if you've got one head, had, you'd yeah, have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just... It was the fact that he had one face and two bodies that I didn't think... But why do you keep saying one <laughs> face and two bodies as opposed to one, one head? head and two bodies? We're all the man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, he's well, got... surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. You, I mean, roll I've up, got... roll up, see the man with one face. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. So it's, it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is, that fella, you know, the one-faced man, the three-breasted woman... He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what I'm saying. Well, they've all... That, they that all... isn't the peculiar thing about him. Yeah, well, they all had names like that. Right. But there was one thing in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> What do you mean? It was ju it just said un unidentified. What what does it look like? Um, sort of sort of testicles for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that's. It just reminded me when you. What talk do you about mean strange. testicles for eyes? And what is it? Did he have a normal body? I didn't even look at that. Oh, for f no, so that's what I'm saying though. You're attracted to to the odd oddness of the thing, and that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. Yeah. You know, it, it, it'll be odd for a minute. And then, I'm sure... For him, get, for him it will be, yeah. He'll yeah. <laughs> get used to you. I've got my head round it a bit more, and, and the way that there's loads of people in the world, mm. and yet you don't see people with, like, dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing freaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street going, oh, everyone's got one head. That's yeah. weird. Susan, I don't see any dangly eyes today. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> Went out the other night with the lads. Um, you know, there's a few of us, you know, young, free and single. You Must can... look like the swingers. Oh, it was pretty... It looked like a boy band had gone out. It looked like, really? It looked like, you know, in sync had hit oh, the streets. Right, right. Hey, yeah, yeah. A friend of mine said, let's go to a club. Right, I haven't been to a nightclub for a long time. I haven't been. Is that because your glasses steam up when you walk in out of the cold? That is a problem in the winter. I genuinely, it's not. It's very difficult to make a good impression when you, as you walk in, your glasses steam up straight away, and you know you you got to take them off and clean them and stuff, and then you know you get a bit. On your wife runs, you pull your wife runs up yeah. through the jeans, yeah. clean them on that, or the back of a girl's dress. <laughs> but um. We cruise down to the club, it's one of those big sort of London super clubs. And uh, it's a bit of a queue, and I think it's a bit of a chore. But we're queuing up, we're in good spirits, we're looking at it, it sounds pretty funky, we can hear the music coming out. You know, we've been in the queue for quite a while, 20, 25 minutes. Forget it, 25 minutes. Well, yeah, we were pretty excited by this point. The doorman says, uh, hello lads. He said, yeah, we're coming, please. He went, no, you're not. Really? He said, you're not coming in. 
and he just immediately lifted the little rope and sent us away from the queue, right? And we were slightly perplexed. We were, we were dumbfounded. We didn't know what to do. We, we, it was like this, it, this it couldn't be happening. It didn't make sense. We just que queued up what was going on. And so um, my friend said, well, we've got to find out why he's not going to let us in. So he goes yeah. back over. I thought what you wanted to do. You wanted to tie him up with logic. That'll show a bouncer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, show him how educated you are and how you can win an argument and make him look stupid. You'll be in that club in no time. <laughs> That's what they appreciate. <laughs> they love that. Because what they respect is being made to look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we went over and... Uh... They, they really look up to intellectuals. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so one of our mates goes over and he says... Uh, why didn't you let us in? And he went, because you didn't have any girls with you. No. <laughs> no, I'll tell you this. That's kicking you when you're down. Because when you're out on a Saturday night trying to get into a club to meet women, and the reason you're not allowed to go in a club to meet women is because you haven't got any women with you, that's just salt in the wound. It's so humiliating. So, um, a friend of mine says that there's a VIP entrance over there. There was like a woman with a clipboard, you know, the guest list. Uh, separate entrance. She said, you know, you've got a little bit of profile, Steve. Why don't we try and use your... You ran out you've got your Golden Globe in your hand, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, I always uh, I always carry, uh, you know, some of my cuttings with me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, it, so, and I felt a bit self-conscious about that. I was thinking, I'm not into this, you know, it's a bit awkward. But he said, look, don't worry, you just stand here. Just stand here, just like you're having a conversation. I'll go over, I'll say, I'll point him out, I'll go, oh, there's you know, Steve Merchant over there, at the office. Or oh, God, Steve! So I thought, well, you know, well, the thing is, we were out, and I was I was a bit frustrated, and I thought, you know, uh, we may as well try everything. So um, so I stand there, with my friend goes over, and he has a word, and he comes back, and he says, uh, it's fine. She's, she can't let us in the VIP entrance because she's not allowed, but what she can do is walk us to the front of the queue, right? And walk in front of the queue and explain. So I think, OK, fine. Oh, God. So oh. we walk past everyone else, right, to the front of the queue, right? She goes up to the guy. She says, uh, this is Steve Merchant, office. The guy goes, I know he is. We're not letting him in. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> By now, of course, some people have recognised me. So they're having, trying to have my photo taken. So there's people inside the uh, line that's being allowed in the club. I've got to lean across the rope to have my photo taken with them, even though I'm not allowed in the club. So they go, oh... All right, this is Steve. They're having the photos taken, right? Camera phones and that. They're going into the club where the music, the party's kicking off. I'm outside waiting for the next chump who wants to have his photo taken. I mean, it was mental. So, um... That's unbelievable. I was furious. And then one guy, I remember he was, he was chatting, and he, he goes, oh, yeah, brilliant. I love the podcast and all that stuff. I love Carl. Is Carl with you? I said, oh, Carl's not out here. And his girlfriend, she went, who's that? And he went, oh, it's just the same motion. He does the office, he does the thing. And she went, who, who cares? Who are you, Bruce Forsyth? And it's that thing when suddenly I'm being humiliated and embarrassed <laughs> by someone's girlfriend. I never asked for that. I never asked for her opinion on me. I'm sorry if I don't impress you, if I'm not sufficiently famous for you. But it's not my fault. It's your girlfriend who brought it up. It was like I'd gone over to her and tried to show off, and she was annoyed. I was, so by now, I was just furious. Oh, so God. I thought, forget this. Well, I was walking down the street, and there's a, a group of um, builders sitting down having a cup of tea. One of them goes, all right, Rick. I went, all right, mate. The other one went, not as fat as on telly. <laughs> I went, oh, thanks. Not as fat as on telly. So he went with, well, you are fat, but you look even fatter on telly. He didn't say, oh, God, you don't look fat at all. Or, oh, you look, you, you, you look, you look big on telly, but you don't look fat. Just went with, not as fat as on telly. And there's nothing I could say, but cheers, mate. Now, when you said cheers, mate, cause you, did you say that because you were... Because I'd say cheers, mate, because I'd be a little bit scared of them. No, I was I'd be worried it's like sarcasm and, you know, I laughed or I laughed or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you can get away with sarcasm I'm, with working-class blokes. I'm I a little could... bit more secure with a working-class man no. than you, aren't I? I'm terrified of them. I feel like they're going to turn on me at any minute. You don't feel confident sort of backing in a lorry driver? Terrified. Oh, right, Because okay. if I did, he'd, le he'd probably lean out and just go, go and get your dad, mate. Yeah, not you. Fuck off, I'm not interested. Not you, yeah. One prediction for the future... Carl is from uh, an academic study, what, what the world will be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life. You'll just need the egg or sperm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? Uh, that isn't what I've heard.
What were you read? I well, heard that. So you got you you read a, an academic study, Rick. But yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all gonna go ugly. <laughs> Different point, though, isn't it? That's a completely different, different point. point, though. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. But no, it's on. just it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population. He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly, <coughs> ugly, ugly. Yeah. So that that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left well, right and centre. Well, no. Well, then that, that doesn't sort. Of, what do you mean? Sorry, Rick. I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is he, are you so saying? Many... Are you saying because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. Okay, I still don't. You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if we all, if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, no, they'll still sort of fancy because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now because it's all based on looks. Sorry. So, but what's this got to do what's with what this Ricky world said? like? Describe you, because describe Ricky's a typical town or. Or country it's exactly me. right. Imagine London. You've still got the gherkin. You've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they everyone's just... still yeah. The so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right. Well, like like that. Yeah, but hold on, because it's not no, like because a strict... we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now, yeah, at a school photo, yeah. You look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> Wouldn't you have to tell the difference between <laughs> some all... of the girls and the blokes? When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not yeah, his school not... photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. <laughs> what are you talking about, Carl? We've got better looking now, haven't we? But we will change. Yeah, Probably we'll change. Probably not in There's 75 years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time... When that'll go, I've said I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you could get rid of that, and I think that that will go in evolution. Think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little <laughs> finger. I've been watching my little finger. But again, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking, you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not imagine that. To say, not, not French fries. Hang on, that. though. Well, oh. At what point are we us, then? They are. This is good. Go on, go on. Go on. No, because if I if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? Okay. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff. Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge, yeah. and the stuff them them kids on that know. I just think, where have they stored that? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. Basically, mm. you're you, you've got about the same hardware I as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. So, what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yep. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> I'm never going to use my head! Well, I'm not, but because what what's the point? your head is, though? Because I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, all right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they're... No, uh, only... Do you want to see naked ladies? No, <laughs> no, only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. <laughs> so, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Mm. Right. That can access the internet. Right. Mm. So what, why bother using But you're still knowledge? the go-between. You're, you, Carl, are the go-between between the internet and whatever your but mouth says. you can't says. beat the internet. Yes, you can't, it knows go everything. Uh, where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on, one of them bright people on a University human, Challenge just put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch a University Challenge and go, I want to be like them, I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is 
he's, he's, I, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. And I'm hoping that one day... <laughs> what an amazing game! What an amazing because, intellectual oh, pursuit God. that is! What a lucky lady. <laughs> what, a what a Suzanne said to that! Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along, and then I'm saying, "Oh, it might be this one, or whatever." I remember. The... I love that because I remember once it was about um, five years ago. Uh, Carl and Suzanne were around near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different parlor games um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat and you have to do animals, and you have to go uh, first one is A. Then B. So you say aardvark. Next one goes beaver. Next one goes cat. It came to Carl. He panicked and he went egg. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on egg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're sat there watching University Challenge and on a good night it's, you know, well known jeweler of Fabergé is well known for his jewel encrusted war. <laughs> egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. <laughs> That's Sometimes great. Great. It's what I'm saying. Oh. It's gonna, keep saying the same thing eventually it's yeah. like a broken watch Carl his head right, looks isn't? like hey <laughs> yeah I've just got more chance of getting it right sure but um, also he told me uh, w when he plays University Challenge um, uh, he says he's given up ever trying to get an answer so now he tries to guess who's gonna answer the question <laughs> <laughs> another great game <laughs> Suzanne's wrote it on <laughs> oh, <laughs> how would you do with that that's not I'm normally all right on that. <laughs> I'm normally all right on there's that. There's got to be something else. There's, there's, another, there's, another, there's, another, there's another evolution thing, though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that, you, you can't argue with that, because the evidence well, is there. Can. OK, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain. Mm isn't part of filling your head with stuff the journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Whereas if I just, if I'm, say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit, you go, right, we've got, what do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, <laughs> when it's two, we're mm. going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. <laughs> well, we still need plumbing. Yeah, I know we do, but... The, it's uh, odd that they would have chosen plumber. They've got such... <laughs> oh, yeah. Such kind of small it's what, it's, it's uh, what ambitions for their It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yeah. a plumbing business. <laughs> they, want, they want the baby to carry on the business of the plumbing. They, they want the baby to be able to plumb. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but up. you've made the scenario they're, up. They're not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. No, what well, I don't say that. No, no, no. Said that. I, I think Steve's right, and I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun. You know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop. It's, it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us but... lazy. Carl, it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. It kind of looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm adding. Right, look at it like this. Jesus, look, I see it all the time now. Go on. You go. Ooh. Where are you going to someone? And they go, I'm going to uh, Dorset. Aye. Oh, aye. What road are you taking? Don't know. I'll just pop on the sat nav. Now. That's a start, isn't it? OK. Let's act that out with me, OK? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. Uh, how are you getting there? Uh, car. All oh, right. Yeah, well, which, uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why, why do you want to know? Oh, just, just, making a, just making a friendly chat. Just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know, really. I've, I've got a sat-nav in my car, and Ooh. I'm getting there, and... What do you mean? What, what, what? Lazy, isn't it? Well, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a pigeon. I don't... Have I mean, you got an A to Z? Well, well yeah, but it's, yeah, it was a, on a computer, the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and... It's a bit, and lazy, bit lazy, don't Not it? really, no. No. Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? A to Z's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit... Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. 
Clive, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road. We need to get going. What is this? Uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm sorry. taking, which is a fucking boring thing who? to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this twat? Because Fuck we really got to get going. He's a fucking dickhead. Who, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, we're well, just, we'll just telling him we're using the sat nav. Yeah. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but but look, look what's happened. Who the fuck Would Columbus found America if he had had a sat nav? Yes. No, he wouldn't. He didn't put in America. He would have taken it. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody d- just hold goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, be on a sat-nav? <laughs> no. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... What's the difference between the sat-nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> and I've instantly out. gone from finding oh. a continent to a little <laughs> cafe. I love that. I love that. A little greasy I'm, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Oh, I don't know yet. It's the unknown world. <laughs> What are you taking? Just a uh, boat like all lazy swim, you can. <laughs> I love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat-nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time. Oh, got a compass. Don't you know where north is, you twat? <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> Because you find you find new things. I'm for everyone. Meanwhile, down. Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the. Uh... I just think you know Columbus. Right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Uh, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? Dressed you never up as got Columbus. You never went and bought a sat nav. <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. You never go out. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate. Is fancy dress. Yeah, but I like looking at the. Uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right. So you found a fancy dress shop. <laughs> Where are you supposed to be going that you got you had time to get sidetracked and go in a I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> just cut Amazing, it. that's the last time. You don't want to get lost. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want to get lost, no, do you? Because I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself get a get sat nav. nav. You know, I'm I'm just saying you, that's that's how you find little treats along the way and you, <laughs> next time you pass it or next time someone says, Do you know where the fancy dress shop is? You go, Yeah, I do. You go, I have no idea because I was lost, no, I didn't no, know where no, it was. No, 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 no. normally I'll I'm not gonna tell you. Lazy cunt, have you got an AZ? Oh, that's harsh. Yeah, find it yourself, you lazy mm. twat. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. what have you learned? You keep going on about all this learning. What yeah. have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, sum when? up. Sum up mankind's foray into the future. I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future. It will then be read in a hundred years' time and go. Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions. Just, predi- no, just, just, just you... sum it up. Just sum it up. Um, I believe... Start off with... I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will... OK, start off and with that what, just have, like, a top five? Well, no, or just... just well, maybe th- just predictions. Just predictions. Yeah. Yeah. OK, yeah, OK, future. yeah. So and, then just... a little, and then a little thing to remember, and remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkington, predict that in the future mankind will... Uh, start off with that. Start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. All right, I'm Carl, and uh, the future. He's already gone off road. It's a scary off, place, but the future's going to happen. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right? There's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay. Your predictions are. Mm. Well, we're 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 all. Uh, mm. It's not a sound bite. Yeah, keep going. Going. I'm I'm going going space. Okay, space. This is, this is in a book. I've got, I've got to think about. I okay. Don't want to get it think. Wrong. Okay. Think first. Think uh, and then then say it. Okay. Starting from now, these words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. I think trousers <laughs> are going to be stopped being made. <laughs> Just because right. you see, you see kids now. They've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. So I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution. Just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. <laughs> that's the evolution of the trouser because it's dropping incredibly well, down the arse. You see, now you see kids' underpants, so they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one. <laughs> okay, that's an amazing make, one. They'll stop making trousers in the future. Good, okay. Good. Uh. We're going to get weaker. We're, we're, that's already that's already happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. 
right. So we've definitely that's that's evidence. You can't argue with that. I probably put that first because the guy's right. What's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Okay, they number three. They used to say, and I'm gonna die. Keep the dogs away. They used to say. They used to say, put your trousers up. No, they say, put them down. You can. <laughs> <laughs> number three. <laughs> right, number three. Oh, the scholars are now waiting with bated breath when they find yeah. this old scroll, and they go, "Ooh, what can number three be?" Uh, I reckon we'll blend all our food. <laughs> No, because they, they... thought then he was going to make a point about race. Yeah. I never thought it would be. We'll blend all our food. <laughs> like oh, like they do for babies, you mean? Just oh. Yeah, I just think oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen yeah. chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. yeah. We had wisdom teeth. Yeah. Oh. Now they say they took them out. You're not using them. Yeah. Why not using them? Because your food's soft. Yeah. Mm. Sorbet. Yeah. Soups. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything's soft, doesn't it? When you two, get an avocado, yeah. they say, yeah. is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think I think chewing is a t sort of a thing, of the, thing of the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You don't mm. have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon... Uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth. Mm. Done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> This is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. Oh, so the, you, what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're, if, if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking around? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. Why not? No, what you mean is what? that the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads ghetto. of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental point. This would never work. Absolutely yeah. one of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird, that one. Yeah, It yeah. could be done. It, I it, reckon it could be easily why done. Why would it be? OK, OK, because that last one, that's number four. A load of bollocks. Um, so what's number five? There'll be, there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, we're not running out of no, words. No, we are. Now. We are definitely no. running out of using, words. No. It's using the letters we've no. already got yeah. and making new words. Yeah, yeah. we're making, yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. Have Plenty. you any idea? You could, you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's, that's because their, their alphabet mm. is shorter than ours. They've only got something like 24 letters over there. Right. But they go mental with the L. <laughs> Now, now, what we do is, we've got 26 letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling we, at all. We, we are. We're not. I mean, it's a stupid... Boswallocks <laughs> in shampoo. Now, there's a word where they've gone, well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks? Boswallocks. Have you just made that up? No. no it's that, it's that they go, I knew, knew with Boswallocks and Ceramide are. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to... They, they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a, it's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. Yeah, it's another word. Is that real? You've missed yeah, that. No, I haven't. That's a real word. Yeah. Now, this is what I'm saying. So, years ago, when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, Go on. sodium. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds all right. He likes sodium. He doesn't like with that. Because it sounds like an, an, something in it, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswallocks? Are you winding me up? <laughs> no, the two it's of you? real. It's, it's, it's real. And that's because 26 letters, we've wasted them. Years ago, we went mental with the, you know, pneumonia, sticking a P on it, 
and uh, there's loads of words where you go, what's that like doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? <laughs> and has? now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things, no. Cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something, because they're going, well, I can't think of the word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word that up. hasn't been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be used. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you took Ricky two goes and you accepted his second one. Well, I think we've uh, I think we've um, sorted out the future. Since obviously the days of Nostradamus, there's been many people who've tried to foresee the future. Uh, Carl, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's endless um, you know predictions. Apparently, there are other planets that may collide with ours. You know, there's some scientific basis on this. But if you knew with certainty that today was the end of the world, how, how would you spend that final day? So, for instance, I've always wanted to smash up a bar. Do you know what I mean? It's strange, strange but I've always wanted the exhilaration of just smashing all those bottles, like you see in a film. But would you enjoy it as much, knowing that you're going to die in eight hours? I don't know. I suppose it's the sense of abandon, you know? I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just see, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know, I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought, because um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world, because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately, because they're gonna the next day anyway. everyone's gone, yeah, so there's so, not going to be mourning families. But, but, then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. With plants and animals, there could be up to 10 million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't it? It's a lot. But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's... that's well, what I mean is the police know about the gangsters. Right. But they go, right, we're aware of them. Right. Let them get on with it. We'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. The spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them. Don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet? They're lurking in the undergrowth. I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised. I'd be surprised if there was something... It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now. Because we have to. We live no, in a world don't. now. We do. We know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or... Well, no. Well, no, look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd no one never heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or a What do you mean a, it's like, not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing. It's not something that's... AIDS hasn't been, like, living under the soil for millions of years, but I'll wait till the 1980s and I come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in... Not, I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms, there's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just, like, almost like bacteria. Sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> you but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to... I don't think she can. Just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of because, the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. 
Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand, why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think it's someone in the 1900s. We uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented. And, and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, it's all, it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go, it's all right, it's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like, look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who said he's up there with well, Einstein? In, one of, PR people in one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You go Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson, and that's, <laughs> and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now, because everything that's needed. Remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill, and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, suddenly, yeah, 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 yeah. And what can they do? Oh, Necessity like that, is the know. mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, where, where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little where's well, a here's, niche? Well, here's something. About oh. a year ago, I came up with a see-through toaster so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. So right. I've just been beaten to the post. <laughs> <laughs> I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their designer car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> and then it, he, put, he put shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone... What a mania. I think that's a brilliant... I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently, and I would have loved... But I think he did it when he was about nine, seat. and he must have thought, oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good? But if why, hasn't, why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving, and you go, oh, where's the service station? You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would you're so, so you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat that's a toilet? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you've got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to Cornwall all shitting? <laughs> well, not all the time, but it's, it's, it's more useful to me than a lighter. So also, what, at Where what do you point wash do you wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Well, at the end a... of the journey. <laughs> oh, God! So you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your arse at uh, Pol Perro. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, oh, I think I'll have one. You need one? Not really, but it's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy, I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. There's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minutes, Rick, that takes, doesn't it? Ten know, minutes yeah. to pull minutes. off, have a quick shit. Driving along, just, it's just going on. It's just going on, don't even know about it. Radio's on, everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know, I mean, we all do it as well, that's the thing. Anything else you'd uh, come up with? There's so many things, chocolate fountain, anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> Think of computers. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand, now, for someone to come up with that, you go, this, there must have been some sort of alien involved here. What do you mean? Why do you <laughs> think that? So, I love it. So, the frisbee, rubbish, anything too clever, well, it wasn't an invention, it was an alien. <laughs> so, there's nothing between frisbee and computer chip. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip, where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, yeah. So you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? That's great. Because that's... I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do... I know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you'd go, what are you... you don't... Well, that's what genius is, though, but, isn't oh, it? There's, there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been yeah. uh, a, a spaceship uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And there's all them rumours, isn't there, in that anger. They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, 
You go, yeah, wheels, we've got them. Yeah, 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 steering wheel. Yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find Carl, it's sand. But the fact that sand makes computer chips is not the interesting thing. The interesting thing is how the human being discovered that, uh, what am I talking about, sand <laughs> makes computer chips, <laughs> that silicon can have information uh, 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 put on it. But we're made out of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, yeah. do you know what I mean? And hydrogen. It, uh, yeah, but that's na nature. You see, yeah. nature is amazing. You can't beat nature. Right? No. It comes up with some amazing things. Yeah, but man is nature. Don't forget that we are, we're an animal. We're a brilliant ape. We're actually 98.6% genetically identical to a chimpanzee, Carl. Think of that. We only differ on 1.4% of well, that, our genetic that, that, makeup. That must be the arse. <laughs> Because that's a lot different. <laughs> when I was about 13, 14, I once tried to improve the animal kingdom by making the hardest animal ever, the most perfect animal. Now, just to clarify, you didn't, in sort of Frankenstein style, no. try and bolt various bits of animals together. It, it was a drawing that I sent to Blue Peter. There was no competition going on. You just thought they would be appreciated. I thought they'd, they'd look at that and they'd go, well, this is, he's a genius. Yeah. This is like Da Vinci. Sure. Um, and this is the animal. This is what I thought, the perfect animal. I mean, when I say perfect, I meant the hardest animal. This right. animal, it could take anything. It was just the strongest, hardest, fastest, right? Yeah. So, I started with the head of a lion. Of course. That makes Do you know what I mean? Sense. It looks good. Right, bite you, right? Yeah. Okay. I popped that on the body of a rhinoceros. Okay, so it's got the toughness, the oh, armour, if you like. The, the, oh, it's full strength. Head of a lion. Think of that. So you've got this picture. Head of a lion, body of a rhino. Perfect. Okay? Hold on, though. Pop some arms on it. The front arms were the arms of a gorilla. The arms of a gorilla. So it okay. could punch, grip, it could make stuff. The lion, I mean, that's where the lion falls down, because it can't make stuff. Sure. It can't climb, you know. So, okay, then. Wait a minute. You think that's got enough weaponry? Sounds like it. No. Pop on the tail of a giant scorpion. <laughs> a giant scorpion? Yeah, yeah. So, so a scorpion that's, that's the size so of a rhinoceros. Exactly, so the tail was as long as that rhino. So now yeah. this is a scary animal. Yeah. And this is where the animal fell down. Uh, I thought, right, legs. Well, the fastest animal is the cheetah. The cheetah. Popped on four cheetah legs. Four cheetah legs. It would have collapsed. Under it the would have collapsed the immediately. <clears throat> so, uh... Yeah. Yeah. And you, you drew this, did you? Drew it, yeah. Did you show it to anyone else? Yeah, my mates it? went, that's brilliant. Right. They said, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then just sent straight to Blue Peter. Yeah. Any reply? No reply at all. Really? No reply Surprised. at all. What do you think of that, Carl? If you wanted to make the ultimate fighting animal, what would you come up with? If you had the power, like that fella in Arabian Nights, size of a chimpanzee, you could change into anything, but you could change into... You know, like that. I don't think I'd go for strength and that. I'd go for survival. What would you do? Uh, Cockroach. I'd have, uh, I'd have like uh, an armadillo's body. Right. Okay. I'd have a uh, head of an owl. <laughs> right. The head of an owl. Yeah. Why? 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 Come I mean, Why? What does that bring to the table? The head's there to sort of make it look friendly to, to the human race. So, okay. Because if you look half decent to the human race, they'll, mm. they'll look after you. Right. That's the way it works, yeah. right? okay. with a cat and a dog and all that. Mm. Right. So the owl makes it look nice. Right. I'd have... Uh, I wouldn't have legs. I'd go for, like, the slug juice. <laughs> That's what you mean. So now you're a really slow-moving, legless armadillo with the head of an owl. Slithering along. How yeah. is that going to be friendly? They'll, be, they'll see the beautiful face, but then they'll be terrified by the sludge. No, because the head's that nice that they'll, they'll forgo the, uh, the sludge. But hold on, though. But wait a minute. So this got, it's got this thing that's stuck, right, going at 0.1 miles an hour, with a going, Ooh. right, you come over, you kick the head off. How is this No, because the head can go into the thing like a tortoise. Can it? Yeah, of course it can. Into so, the armadillo body. Well, no, an armadillo doesn't do that. It just curls up into oh, a ball. This isn't an armadillo, is it? So it's... Oh, Why has it got the slug? Why because is that so attractive? What I'm, thinking, what I'm thinking is an armadillo, they're good when they're on their feet. Flip them, they get stuck like a tortoise. Right. Slug stuff, 
keeps it down. So if anything attacks it, it's like a limpet or one of them things that can. Why not have a limpet then? But 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 it no. can't get any. How it can barely move. It can just hardly go and, get just anywhere. Just go and kick it. What just just can't get but anywhere. how can it escape from danger? It's going to move it's rubbish. Very slowly. No, what, it's that's the worst animal. It'll lock itself animal. in. It'll lock itself in. Yeah, and then I just scoop it up on the. You sand. can't scoop it up. It locks itself in if it's in danger. I give it peacock feathers. <laughs> Why has it got peacock feathers? Again, it's just... It's, it's just the so worst animal you I've ever heard. Why has it got peacock feathers? Threatening. It looks more threatening. It that's does, what, that's the least feathers. threatening thing, peacock feathers. It's like Danny LaRue coming at you. There's yeah. nothing remotely scary about peacock feathers. Yeah, to humans. Yeah. But the humans won't be harming it because they like the owl head. People will like to have these things in the garden. Mm. Uh, they eat lettuce. They eat lettuce? They eat lettuce? Why has it got a beak? They eat lettuce. He's telling them what he's going to eat now. The owl's going, fuck that, I want a mouse. I love the fact that he's based what it eats on the fact that how it moves a bit like a slug. Yes. They'll eat lettuce. Yeah. It moves that and they'll eat lettuce. Like I said, it's not that weird if that, if that existed. If that was normal, like when you went out to empty your bin, it was one of them sliding up the wall. <laughs> You wouldn't, you wouldn't even double take. You'd just be like, "Oh, there's the uh, the owl head peacock feather thing." I don't know why it's climbing walls in an effort to find lettuce. Yeah, why is it climbing up that wall? Because that's the only way it can see properly. Because its head's coming out like that. So even though you've designed this animal, now it's you're even expanding <laughs> no, it's, its limitations. Problems. Well, it's, no, it's, it's mainly problems. made as uh, to be on walls. Because <laughs> <laughs> what else is living on walls? <laughs> Now, what a useless animal that is. Carl, I mean. But nature chucks up odd things, doesn't it? Don't. Why are we starting on this again? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that is nature. Okay, now and again, yeah. you'll get, you'll get stuff that. Oh, was he looking at you? Yeah. Was he? <laughs> Look at his fucking head. Look at his stupid round fucking orangey head and oh. Why, why aren't you a freak? You've got a little bald head. We're not meant to be bald. Well, I, I was, I think. That's the thing. That's what nature's done. You see, I didn't do anything with my hair when I had hair. I didn't style it. I didn't do anything with it. And it probably thought, what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas people who love their hair and they comb it and have different styles and look after it, they have hair for ages. Nonsense. No, nonsense. Absolute, well, nonsense. Well, saying, absolute nonsense. What are you saying? Absolute nonsense. it's a little bit weird, then, isn't it? And that's what happens with old people. Once they lose their, you know, will to live. Once they lose the job, they get old. What's my purpose? What am I doing here? And it's like nature goes, you're not needed, and they die. Maybe that's what happened with the dodo. What's it doing? Can't fly. Its wings are useless. Eat it. Tastes horrible. Kill it. <laughs> no, they nature. did eat it. I think they did eat yeah, it. Yeah, but it wasn't very nice, was it? I, th I think they over-farmed it. I think that's why it was extinct, because they did eat it. No, but they did eat it, but they didn't like it. Everybody, you never, you never saw like a fully eaten carcass of a dodo. You're it making this up again. Eaten. All conjecture. No, but they, they didn't eat it all. Everybody would probably try it and go, it's not for me, that. <laughs> but you don't know no this. No idea, you you're just making this. it up. What's this based on, I've that people, and also, why would that kid it out? Because, I'll tell you why. why. Because if it's not nice, people don't go, don't get another one in. And they die out. The reason we've got loads of chickens and loads of cows is because we eat them. If we ate polar bears, we wouldn't be short of them. Because you'd farm it, you'd take more care. But what's a polar bear doing? Sat on a block of ice floating about. <laughs> it's no use to us, is it? It sounds harsh. Once again, no got use. his information from a glacier mint no, advert. But it's no, it's no use <laughs> to us. We know they're there, and it's all very sad when you see them on the news sort of struggling and all that. Yeah. But it's going to make them stronger. <laughs> I saw this trailer for this documentary that said uh, the man who's having a baby. Mm. And I turned on, and it's a woman going through a sex change, and she's pregnant. That's not a man having a baby. That's a woman having a beard. Having a breakdown. Uh, uh, what, what, why is that? What? That's a con. That is pure sense of, it's a man having a baby. Look, the world's first, no, it's a woman. It's a woman. What do you think of that? What would you do if you were a doctor? And I came to you and went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of a rethink of these. Uh, I don't, I, the penis, I hate it. I hate this cock. But what do you mean you hate it? I hate it, I don't want it there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It just sits there resting on these fucking awful testicles that I'm going to get rid of. I want, I want this thrown away. Yeah, well, it's, you know, they're not a great look. 
I know that. Everyone knows that. It's just the way they are. I mean, if we're all being honest, they're an odd design. I don't think anyone likes their own, do they? That's why we cover them. They're not a great thing, are they? What? It's not why we cover them, though, is it? It's part of it, I think. I think deep down, I mean, even if, like, I know you, you ate the Adam and Eve thing, but even if back then he was like, good God, cover them up. <laughs> even he had a leaf on. No, but listen, why? So are you thinking fundamentally, then, that aesthetically the testicles and the penis isn't as good as it could be? What would you have there instead? Well, it's, it's designed that way because that's the way it's got to be designed. It's more about function than... Uh, yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing, isn't it? With, with modern technology... You, need, you know, the, the thing is the testicles have to be outside because they have to be a few degrees below body temperature. Yeah. Otherwise, the Satoli cells die, which sort of feeds the semen and all that. So, they, they, you know, to, to be functioning and sort of like fertile, they have to be outside, which is annoying because I'd put a little rib cage around them like that. I'd, I'd pop a rib cage round those, protect them, wear a cricket box, have that built in, so you cannot get a kick in, a swift kick in the bollocks no, that makes you feel sick. But it'd be better if they could sort of reverse up in a way that <laughs> they, they, they were hidden away. Right. Yeah. So that they were just, then you dropped them, it's like, right, we need to cool them down, be at it in about half an hour. Yeah. Zzz, drop them down. Yeah, like the gear on a on an aeroplane, landing gear. Yeah, and uh, rounding it down, and the bollocks, and the cooling down. Or you could just like just pop them in the fridge for ten minutes. It's well, like they a... could detach, and you could pop them in the fridge. Cool yeah. Down. Can you make me some breasts? Easy. Okay. Go on. You say easy. What are you gonna do? What's your plan? Just. Uh... How do you do that? It's tablets, isn't it? <laughs> no, but testosterone, isn't it? <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> Toblerone. I want. A, yeah, I want some Toblerone. Just well, sort of pointy, pointy tits, mm. like Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stop, though? Supposing I came to you and said, uh, Doctor, listen, um, I like the bollocks, I like the penis, but I don't like them where they are. I'd, I want them, I want them in the middle of my chest. I want breasticles, yeah? The arse, I don't like it around the back, I can't see what's going on. Pop that on the front where the bollocks were. I want my ass where I can look down and see what's going on. Can you do it? I think it's just easy to move the head. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, when was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been round, haven't they? So I've been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. Now, I used to love them Yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, got... this year? No, Just no, recently. years ago. Oh, years, ago like, right. years ago, when I loved them. I said, I love Tic Tacs, me. Yeah. He met one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No. No, that's no he knew some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And uh, he, must have got a about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. we'd have about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. Now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? In how, in how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you're yeah, lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just... What just, so just this, sorry, whoa, 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 bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. No. They were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, sat around yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the I've already run out of sorry, responses. I've got yeah. nothing to say about no that. Opinion, it I, was, I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic-tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this hand like is, other than a yeah. bloke... Other than you said your dad, I like Tic Tacs, me. He went, all right, I talked to Albert. Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring him around. Put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breast like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the cunting place. Oh, do you want some more? No, cause me fucking no. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause me real for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up in an audio book. Well, that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs. Yeah. You can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> no. No, well, we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? 
that's that's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity, it is the same condensity. Um, condensity. Yeah, so I got rid of them <laughs> like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got shot of them all, um, you'd be backing up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding dong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop mm. them, they'd go in every corner and that, like that or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be backing up, tinging it up. Sheila's getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. Up. No, it's, it's a really little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell that's of a ingre- hell of a time you had with your parents there. Oh. The old Tic Tac No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when when I my mum and dad regravelled the drive, <laughs> yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac Let, incident. Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. Yeah, I just imagine the clock ticking there. It's Christmas Day. I go, what are you smiling at? Oh, I remember it used to ting up the tube. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about selling this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't... Nothing. Nothing at all. Carl, I know you like to be kept abreast of all the latest breaking science news. Did you read recently about the blind mice that they have been able to make see again? And, um... Hopefully, they're, they're, whatever they did, which allowed these mice to be able to see again, they're hoping to be able to do with humans in maybe about ten years' time. Or at least begin tests. Extraordinary, isn't it, to be able to... I mean, to be able to cure blindness would be a remarkable achievement in science. It is, but it's just that thing how they say they've done it on mice and what have you. Yeah. If I was blind and I went in for the meeting, Mm. the doctor... Yeah. ..and they said, do you want yours doing? And then they said, like, Mm. I've done it on mice, that wouldn't be good enough for me. I'd say, look, when the blind fella gets in, don't say we've done it on mice, just say we've done this on eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Because what eyes? You say just a pair of eyes. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you say mouse's eyes, it's like, well, it's, it's not the same. And it yeah. sort of, it would make me go, I'll leave it. Yeah. And then you, you, you wake up and you can see, but you've got very tiny eyes right in the... Uh, the you put in mice eyes. <laughs> I'm scared of cats. It's just eyes. I think I just don't like having my eyes messed with. And even if it was blind, you know, I just, I wouldn't like it. Right. Uh... And I think mine are more active than most, my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> um, well, I went for a what's-her-name, Steve. You don't know. I, I've, I've had uh, problems with my legs. Oh, right. Christ almighty. He's the same... What are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a 7 year old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three <laughs> times in one week. He goes, now his legs <laughs> rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. Don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. And he's going, oh, right. Christ no. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30-odd years, I've been working hard, and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, oh. 33. Sorry to start with such a hard question. But <laughs> how have you been working for 30 years? Well, I just have. I sort of uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm well, just you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> pissing about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, OK. So you've been working for 15 years then. OK, good. Yeah, right. but I had my paper around when I was 10, didn't I? And that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that. Getting up at half four. It all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked me height when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> he always says this, eh? Like it's a classic story that everyone should know. Everyone and also right. the phrase "kicking my own height." Yeah. No, Explain so what you mean. Just kicked me height when I was when I was kicked a kid. Your, no one understands. You Carl. kicked your leg up to I the height that like, you were at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I kicked you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go, "I kicked me height." So you were so you were four and a half foot, and you put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. 
Right, OK. <laughs> Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go, get Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. But so why, why did he you fall over? He tickets, the neighbours were cracking <laughs> up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, did, you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have a kick me eye. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> what did look like? What the fuck did that look like? Yeah, he's got to think it all through. I <laughs> thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, no. You, you, it stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ but you didn't almighty. think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> like I hit the salute with his leg. <laughs> what? what were you doing? So, anyway, I landed on my back yeah. and... Uh, and I did some damage, I think. Yeah, and it's because definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had, like, a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done. Because when you get older... I mean, it was a kidney stone thing. Once you've seen... Once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, got to start looking after your body. Do you think body. you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 years? <laughs> Well, you just think that'll eventually kill you? Well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking <laughs> of Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then. I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You know, if there's anyone listening you always who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what, though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella to, uh, like, a professional uh, leg rubber. A um, professional leg rubber, yeah. And he's... Uh, he sort of said uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of, like, podcasts? I said, am I in charge of my brain, or is my brain in charge of me? Yeah, do you remember what I said? It's the most stupid thing you've ever said. Yeah, well, well, listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber. Professional leg rubber, yeah. Right, and he is professional. Yeah. Right. Remember, so leg rubber. You haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he do back, left and right? Or? Back, back rubbing as well, he does it all. Right, right. right. So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, oh, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them, like, like just about... Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well. And your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so so he lifted the leg up, and I went right. Was stop this doing above that. a laundrette? This surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that on. Oh, the... okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So um, definitely a laundrette. So so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got uh, towels under his pants. Yeah, bras. Yeah, halfway through, he said, "You've got twenty p. I'll be for the dryer." <laughs> okay. So I'm lying there, and he lifts the leg up, yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, that hurts a lot." Mm. So he said, "Oh yeah, short nerves." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You, you know, you're you're outside of the body." Is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body's yeah. longer than the inside. <laughs> so he, he he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he was going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid, this as well. Mm -hmm. Putting me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice, though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that, so, oh, you know, that, that's... That he went, oh, shut <laughs> the fuck <laughs> up. He probably said that, he said that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. A lot like, of tenseness? Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional a, rubber? Or? He's, a, he's a doctor, he's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you... got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. He said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. He said, because you, you know... You, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I tell me about it. So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, "Oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person who's, oh, who's colourful enough to spend forty-six quid for this oh, hokum." He said, "You're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them." Rather than them being in charge of the So, brain. all you did was you met a person as stupid as you. <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's. He, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up. That was the first visit. That's the first. I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like 
15, no, he saw it right fucking tackle coming. No, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay, but anyway, don't, the reason... Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well, I am doing I've got locked into it. I've got to go at least another three times Why? and try what to get out mean? of it. I don't know. I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait. Well, what's the wisdom he's going to come up with next week? That would be brilliant. I would kind of... Yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is... Your blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking... You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. Do you know, like, how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus, right? He said, mm. uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep... Uh, Close your eyes. And see <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just leaving but, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, "Oh fuck me!" He said, "He said what you've got to do when you go to sleep: focus on your toe." Right? <laughs> okay. He said, "I'm just thinking about nothing <laughs> else." I said, "He's a witch." <laughs> did he? Did, did he say you didn't put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, "Focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you." Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so th- what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie Visualize down, shut it. your eyes and, and sort of look at it sort of thing. So I was lying there and it just wasn't working because... Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was... You even were, though you were thinking of a finger? Well, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next it day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> You were still oh, using your face, even though you were What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking yeah. down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids <laughs> at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm going to die. I am going to die. Why, out of interest though, and this is this will sound naive. Why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it? Is it? Is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why? Why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, developed. I, I, I honestly it's got to be trauma, on it. It's the things. Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Amazing. Because oh, they, 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 they oh, pinpoint they things. All the tic tacs they never yeah. yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> uh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No. Because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> Me, Mum and Dad don't even remember so, me then. And, and it's oh, weird. I remember, uh, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st- strong image I have of that. No. I don't remember that. No, you no, wouldn't remember no, that, no, were no, you? No, would you, you know, weren't there, were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember well, having you one know, of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to memory. go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, OK, um, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by... Um, <laughs> Gangsters, <laughs> where's the fucking tic tacs? No, I we lost our truck for you. Yeah. When, I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window, and the window was open, and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in. I just couldn't open my eyes. But more, I don't understand. Why were they? Why were they glued? Why were they? What do you mean they were glued? But why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, <laughs> I'm not asleep. My eyes are glued together. It's just <laughs> you get a build up on yeah. the on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all. It, <laughs> when they came in, and you could sense them looking. I didn't know they were there. <laughs> I went to what's her name, Harley Street. 
I went for a, a checkup mm. and uh, like a medical. Mm. Posh, you know, Harley Street. It's like yeah. it's the top doctors, isn't it? I've never yeah. been before. Yeah. All posh buildings and that. I uh, went up to the counter. I said, uh, I see the doctor. They said, name, yeah. Right. It was 10 minutes. Go and wait in the waiting room. Dead posh waiting room. Dead fancy. Big leather furniture and that. Yep. Loads of magazines. I mean, like a, like a news agent's. Yep. In the middle of the room on a table. Loads of them. So I'm looking through and there's the, you know, there's the top quality ones. Your Esquire, you know, GQ, Classy, Yacht Weekly, uh, all that. Country Life. Uh, boys. Boys? It's one there, yeah. Boys. What's that? Right, lifted up like the one on top of it. And it's like boys with a Z. <laughs> Two fellas stood there looking, uh, sort of Italian looking. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. Right. Dungarees on. Uh, no shirt then. No shirt, just dungarees sort of unbuttoned, hanging down a little bit. Sure. So no one else is about. I'm never going to buy a magazine like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can tell us you look through a camera and everything. I had I had a little little look just because I thought you know like I say you, it's one you're always chance. looking to learn aren't you you're always looking to learn yeah always open you know there might have been something in there that I go right I get it now I understand why why they like doing that or whatever yeah right so uh, she said I was gonna you know ten minute wait I can I can have a quick flick through mm. picked it up had a look um still none the wiser why well what did you see when you opened it up. Um, just loads of, uh, I mean, like I've said to you before about, I don't know why you like looking at knobs when they've got one of their own. <laughs> right. There's no right. surprises there. You're not going to go, oh, yeah, so Sure, yeah. yeah. Some had, like, car oil on the face. Uh, knob out. Yeah. There was someone sat on, um, like, a, a, one of them square things of hay. Oh, yeah. Sat there, like, sort of sat on it, straddling it. Yeah. Uh, that must have been uncomfortable. Again, knob out. Yeah, yeah, just looking, just looking like it's normal. That's crazy. Like no, that. no farmer walks around like that. What's the other one? There was a, uh, you know, motorbike. They always like them. Yeah. No, I'm going through and and then like the content is all puns. Right. It, it it all everything was to do with knob. Right. That's the only bit they're interested in. <laughs> in the his, male body. Look at look at this bloke strapping not... this huge throbbing thing. The bike's not bad either. Yeah. yeah all that. Yeah. Loads of them. Uh, it was just. Uh, uh, just all, just just cock, just hundred percent. Like let's let's just talk about the knob. That's a yeah. good name for a, a, a gay magazine. Hundred percent cock. Hundred percent cock. Did it not at any moment sort of maybe slightly under you that you might the doctor might come in and see you reading boys? No, because I or wasn't. What about if I walked through? Because I remember once when you were in hospital about to have um, a tube going down your knob and you were sitting in your pants with stockings on and I walked through and you were horrified. So what if I'd have walked in then and went? Yeah, Carl, I would have just said, look at this. Look at this, it's free. And I, and you, and I said, why did you bring that with you? No, I would have just said, look, does it look like I brought it with me? Look yeah, at this. yes, it does, because well, I've never... Because so you I would at... never see... You would never see a gay magazine in a doctor's waiting room. So I think you bought that and then and pretended that it was that's, there. That's or... the thing. That's I was amazed by that. Because there was no, like, you know, there was no Mayfair or anything. They just catered for, like, if you wanted a bit of knob action. <laughs> It was really, I mean, really, I could have complained. Sure. So if you're going to have this, where's a bit of the other? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you had a bit of this, where's a bit of the other? I know one of the things that, that they had, and I thought, they're they really struggling with, like, ideas. They had a Sococo. <laughs> As in Sudoku? Yeah. Sococo. Sococo. Surely, surely Sudico is better. No, because it was like Sococo. Yeah, but it's dick as well. Sudico. Yeah. What, and it's, it was still a Sudoku-style puzzle, but yeah, it just had that name? yeah. Yeah, it's just so everything. Not, it it's was all just Sudoku, but called su- Coco. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Now, that... if I if I was gay, do you know like let's you have say... a game of Lubo. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of Knobopoly. Knoberation. <laughs> Knoberation. <laughs> <laughs> let's have a game of chess. Cock. <laughs> 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 Let's have a game of fuckaroo. <laughs> well, that works for either sex. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's how we spend our okay, Christmases. Fuck a poo. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the number of times I find a theory that he said in gobbledygook, but it's true. I, I think that um. 
I just I think he's been dealt a bad hand mm. in the brain department. <laughs> Do you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. Thoughts, Carl? Well, your brain's in two bits, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I wonder if one half is really good, the other half's messing it up. <laughs> yeah! That's that, could be case. that could be the case. Yeah, well, it is split into two, yeah, and they, and they are, are responsible for different things. Yeah. It's like these sort of families where there's a kind of really bright kid and then a sort of wayward child who just gets into drugs and stuff. Sort of like that up there. Yeah. In your head. Cos you have, you have quite sort of out there nebulous thoughts and you've got a lot of common sense, haven't you? And just having that, uh, that other sense of, like, this is dodgy. What spider sense? Just that sense where you just go, I don't know why, but something's telling me we shouldn't be here. When you go, all right, let's go. <laughs> and you move from it, and you don't know what, what that is. Yeah. You don't know what's decided that. You know, it's like when you're lost. A part of my brain's got me lost, but then there's another bit that I don't know what it is where they go, go left. <laughs> And you do, and then you go, so, remember that time when you called me, I said, I don't know where I am, and yeah. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> Think of that! Think of that! I called him! Oh, my God, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I, I what, went in wandering. London? You got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went wandering, and then, uh, you know... It's when like... he first moved into his new place. He was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place, and he didn't know where he was. He tried How can to you ever short... really get lost in London, though? I'm just... It's um, a cabby. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate that, do they? <laughs> but um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that, you, uh, that you, you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said go, that's much better. Yeah, it was a cold day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's a mm. time and place to be lost. Well, uh, when, go on. Uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place, place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right, good. Okay, so the time? The time when, when you're not in a rush. Right. Uh, okay. But that time I was in a rush and, and I was cold. So a typical argument in your head is what? I'm lost. Um, I'll, do one, I'll do one side of the brain, you do the other side of the brain, okay? In your head, okay? Carl. What? This isn't where we should be. You want to go home, didn't you? This isn't your house because it's a, it's a field. You live in a house, don't you? Why are we standing in a field? This isn't your house. You were meant to go home, but you've walked into a field. No, but that wouldn't... I've, I've never been that lost, where I'm walking across a field. <laughs> At the edge of the field, I'd go, hang on a minute, this isn't right. I wouldn't get in the middle. I wouldn't go that far. I'd go, right, I definitely shouldn't be here. <laughs> you did once. You were in the middle of a field, and your dad had to rescue you. Yeah, and carry that's you when I was a kid, kid, because I was reading as I was walking. That's... <laughs> And he never read again. <laughs> <laughs> but there's another sense. I was in the middle of nettles there. Yeah. I'd walked. It was at uh, it was at my brother's wedding in Cornwall, mm. and I was walking near a cliff edge, <laughs> reading a book. <laughs> and okay, so so uh, so okay. So <laughs> <laughs> Carl, I know you're enjoying this book. I've got, can I have a word with you? Just look. Just look past the book a minute. It's, it's just it's a big drop. Yeah. Well, that's what happened, and then right. that's when the other senses went, hang on a minute, I'm being stung. Load of nettles and stuff. And I just had to wait there for ages until my dad sort of thought, where's Carl? I was there for about an hour and a half. He's trying to book. Fuck me like a cartoon. But why are you wandering off reading a book when it's your brother's wedding? No, this was like, we were in, uh, I think it was St. I Ives in Cornwall. Yeah. 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 I was in St Ives and uh, just, you know, it was a nice day and that. There was no telly in the place. It was a horrible house. Um, so it's all, it was haunted, no, actually. No, honestly. No, not honestly. It wasn't haunted. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, those, the, so you saying honestly it was haunted means fuck all. It's the most, it's the weirdest place and weirdest sensation I've ever had. I spoke to a woman called Mrs Battersby. Right. Uh, who sat on my bed keeping me up all night. My mum came up, she said, you look shattered. I said, yeah, I had a kiss all night. She said, why? I said, I've been talking to Mrs Battersby. She said, who's that? I said, no, oh, some old woman. Now, I can't remember it now, but that's what I did then. And then... Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, so Mrs Battersby didn't exist. Is that what you're saying? She was the ghost? Yeah. It wasn't the landlady? No, there was no landlady. It's a big house, about, right. about 12 bedrooms in it. Right. Dead, dead cheap to stay there, because it was a wreck. 
Yeah, were you that ill? Went were you ill? Did you have flu at the no, time? No, I had nothing like that. I just... So you were sitting up, but you were awake, and you were having a conversation with Mrs Battersby. <laughs> <laughs> what did she look like? I can't remember. I can't even remember having the chat now. Right, but so... at the time, I was like, oh, she just doesn't shut up. Chatting all night. So you don't remember this happening? Or you do remember it happening? No, I remember that, like, if I see my mum now and I mention St. Ives, she'll go, oh, yeah, Mrs Battersby. She remembers coming in, because she was older than me, wasn't she? So to Who? her, my mum. Was she? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. Battersby. She was older than both she of you. She was old because I'm calling her Mrs. Battersby. If she was my age, I'd probably say, oh, it's Susan or whatever. Right, sure. You'd call Ma older people Ms. Battersby. by the surname, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so she kept oh, me up all night. You know, I'm thinking of pictures at the wedding. Uh, so why do you have to go through other things to just have a memory? How old do you reckon you why were? Do, why, I, I don't understand why you haven't got direct access to your memories. How old do you reckon you were? Uh. Your mum was older, though, yeah? You must have a vague idea of when this well, event was. I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking. Okay. I'm, I'm picturing a picture of myself at this wedding. OK. And how old are you? What are you doing? How tall I'd say you? I look about... How were you? Uh, about I'd say I look about seven or eight, looking at the picture. Right, OK. <laughs> yeah. Right, OK. So Mrs Battersby is chatting away to you. You don't remember what she said, but you do remember having the conversation. No, he doesn't remember it at I all. I don't remember the chat now. Well, then so, why are you telling us? You must remember memory. it because you're telling us about it's it. Not your because memory. it's a memory. My mum's reminded me of it. Yeah, but all it says is, oh, this is so far removed. This is hearsay that your mum said you spoke to a ghost once. You don't even remember the ghost. Mrs. But... Battersby. No, yeah, you no, remember you the name, but because her. your mum reminded you of it. In a court of law, if there was a ghost court, they go, hearsay, thrown out of court. Right. You yeah. don't have a memory of Mrs. Battersby. No, look, I know that when I was a kid, yeah. I had a beetle. <laughs> I ate a beetle because I thought it was licorice. Now, I can't remember that now. You can't remember that, but you, you know it happened because your mother told you it happened. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but the fundamental thing is that we can <laughs> believe... Memories. We can memories believe. We can believe you ate a beetle, right, because that is something that could happen in real life. But what we're questioning is that you spoke to a ghost. <laughs> I thought it was licorice. Uh, What's wrong? Was it? Just one of them standard beetles, just a <laughs> black shiny one. Thing is, right, a couple of years ago we were in the ivy and the food came and there's a big blob of wasabi, right? It was like a, a um, got a, a called an oriental hors d'oeuvre, right? And uh, I looked over at Carl and he started going, <gasps> drinking water. I said, what have you done? He said, I have that. I said, that was a blob of wasabi. He said, I thought it was one mushy pea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classy restaurant, they're serving one mushy pea. Well, they do that, don't they? Wow. Small portions. It's all trendy, isn't it? Yeah, I love the fact that it's this, exactly the same thing. Yeah. They've swapped beetle for wasabi yeah. and licorice for pea. Uh, you see things, you see something... You it's think, a good job you remember that anecdote, though, cos he doesn't. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In years to come, we'll be going, it's some wasabi once, did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, according to Ricky, I did, yeah. I was in the ivy. I thought, I thought it were mushy pea. Uh -huh. <laughs> So hang on, I just want to go back to Mrs. Battersby because what you other... confidently said, you confidently said uh, it, was it, was, it was haunted, it was the most haunted place, yeah. but you've got no real evidence for it because even, even you claim you had this encounter, you don't even remember it. Yeah, but you don't remember everything in life, But you do supposedly you? had a conversation with a ghost. I know, yeah. but I didn't know. When I was younger, I but didn't think But you remember the specifics of an oh, aunt so walking you, around? Yeah, so you thought, ah, oh, so I see. If you'd have had the memory, it would just be a nice old lady on the end of your bed all night. Right. And then... It, 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 then when I mentioned it, your man was saying, what do you mean? Mrs. Battersby. Who's Mrs. Battersby? Right. When you're a kid, you're not terrified, are you? No. Nothing scares you. I mean, you. I'm, I'm beginning to think who the fuck is Mrs. Battersby, I must admit. But So, yeah, that was, uh, but it was a weird place. I mean, there was no telly. Right. Um, all they had for sort of company was a calculator. Carl, <laughs> 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 you're wow. the strangest little man that's, that's ever lived. Company, he had a company. Oh, no. There goes Carl with his friend. What's his friend? Oh, it's a, it's a little... It's a Sanyo 4197G. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Oh, calculator, do that boobs thing again. Your mum and dad used to go Memories. out. I stayed in there. Just shots of him with his calculator, <laughs> calculator on the beach. <laughs> My only friend was a calculator. Oh, God. Just oh. the shots of him in Vietnam, he's carrying Tommy. When the batteries, when the batteries, batteries. <laughs> they had to have a funeral for him. <laughs> his batteries were all over the floor. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> the only company was a calculator. Remember, I used to knock around with a brick. Oh, oh, God. oh fuck, man. We have to face facts here. Go on. The world... Is old. Hold on. Right, okay. The yeah, world's old. old. 
But what is that? Is a fact. Yeah, that fact. is a fact. It's the same as if you've got a gran mm. who's seventy. Yeah. Um, there's not much you can do for her. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can say you're warm, mm. but at the end of the day, she's still going to be shitting her pants. <laughs> She's still going to be, you know, forgetting things mm, right. and all the rest of it. And you might be taking care of her, but at the end of the day, the good days are gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, in a way, like the world, it's got to a point that it's old. And, yeah, we can say turn the tap off, turn the lights off, mm. uh, close the windows, stop letting heat out. Uh, the earth, in, metaphorically, is shitting its pants. We are not the same as the first man that nature made. No. No, we're not, no. And that's where we went wrong. And if we didn't interfere at that point, we might have been more suited to the conditions now. And in aura. Right. I'm cold. She doesn't want double glazing. Why not? Just because she's worried that when people come round and sort of knock on the door, she won't hear them. Because it's, <laughs> it's all sort of double glazed. But they're knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but bell. she said, that, no, she didn't like a bell. It makes her jump too much. Well, what, how, how, they, how do they get in now? Well, it's the thin door, the thin glass. You hear it. It's not like soundproof, like double glazing is. What, so they, she, they have to knock they on knock the... They knock like that on the door. And she can hear that because but it's like a wooden door. why they double glaze the door? Is it a glass door? No, they want to put that PVC door in in with the thicker so glass. Hang on, so she's scared by... She doesn't want a doorbell because that alarms her, but the knocking is fine. The knocking's fine because you, you get to know knocks. Why don't they have a bell that when you press it, it makes that noise? Because they haven't done that yet. Well, Maybe yeah, that's yeah, an you, idea. Could, you could do a sample of a... Like that. So when they press the doorbell, she hears... That's easy, that's done. You could sort that out for her. Well, I don't want to start getting dragged into it because... Why don't you make Arnie Nora a bell that knocks? Well, he could be done, but the fact of the matter is it isn't, and that's why she doesn't want double glazing. But why don't you tell her, say, Arnie Nora, have double glazing, be warm, be safe, hear the knock, hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. Arnie Nora, hear the knock of the bell on the doubly door. She could fart until she's blue in the face. No one will be able to hear, but look, no one will be able to smell it. But this is double glazing. This is tremendous. It. This is it, though, isn't it? She wouldn't be around now. If it wasn't for people interfering, coming up with tablets, uh, m making weak people live longer. Right. <laughs> You're annoyed at that. You're annoyed. I know he's such a fascist, isn't he? Anti yeah. Nora, a weak person who has been allowed yeah. to live. Yeah. No, Eugenics but the, is where you, you'd be happier. I, I, but don't you see what I'm saying, though? The way the world. We've, we've changed more than the world has. We can't handle anything now, can we? Look at it, like I say, a bit of snow, a bit of cold, everything comes to a standstill. Yeah. Oh, I can't go out, it's dangerous, you'll slip over, people having time off work. Yeah. What would you do, right, if you run a business, right, your business could go under, right, it snows a bit, you've got ten employees, you're paying them well, and they go, I can't come in today, Carl, it's a bit icy. I'll do, I'll do it, OK? Right, they're snowed in, right, you're running the business, what are you running? It's a, uh, let's not, don't, you know, I'm not going to big myself up, it's just a, no, it's a factory, it, uh, it's, it's you bends I make, you, no, don't, don't bends for, you know, Toilet, so yeah. you run a, okay, right, okay, so, plumbing, so plumbing, you, you, you pay them all right, don't you? I'd say most of them are on above average. So you're there, what time do you get in? Um, about quarter to nine. Quarter to nine, waiting for them to come in at nine, yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, it's snowing, it's a bit snow, snowy, you got there, it took you a bit while, you'd set off early, did you, or? Gave myself a bit more time because I had to put the heating on the car. Okay. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello, uh, uh, KP Plumbing. Oh, uh, is that is that Miss Pilkerton? Yeah, it is. Yeah, who's that? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's Sheila. Um, listen. Sheila, shouldn't you be here by now? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I was going to set off. Well, don't, but... we'll set off now. Stop wasting time. We've got a big order on. No, I know. We're all but... on a bonus here if we get this done. I'll see you in uh, ten minutes, shall I? I can't make it. What? I can't make it. Why not? The car won't start and it's slippy on the drive. I just can't get out. Get the transport. I'll see you in, I'll give you 20 minutes, all right? Don't no, worry about it. Well, Thanks for calling. I'll see you in a bit. I'm also scared of the ice. I'm scared of the ice. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to come in today. It's dangerous. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to wait until the ice and snow goes away and then but I'm going to come in. But they're predicting it's going to be about two weeks before yeah, they clear I'm this. Yeah, I can't really travel in this. It's oh, a bit dangerous. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay at home. I'll, uh, I'll replace you. Because I need someone to come in with a big you're firing me because I can't get into work with this. This well, I, I got think, into work, Sheila. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you don't live with me, do you? If you did live with me, then no, you'd probably it see bad. how... It was bad where I was as well. Yeah, oh, you, do you know how bad it is here? When you come round and have a look how bad I'm, it is here, no, you drive I'm my... Tell you what, you come round and drive my fucking car because I'm snowed in, you fucking calling me a cunt. And I'll tell you, if you fire me, I'll tell you to drive you and you bald-headed wanker.
Right, you're fired anyway for, for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm. Right then, see ya. Right, and right. she's she's done with. She's weak anyway. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. KP Plumbing. Hiya, uh, is that uh, Miss Pilton? Yeah, it is, yeah. Hi, it's Bobby. Oh, um, Bob. Yeah, um, bit of trouble. Um, uh, in my area, it's absolutely snowing. It's possible. No one's getting out. I live near Sheila. Oh, listen, way. yeah, well, yeah. Sheila's just been on. She's saying she All can't right. get in either. She can't. I've just seen her out there trying to dig her car out, and she's hurt her back. She's really, really tried hard to get to work, but she can't do it because she's, she's not very rich, and her car doesn't work, and she hasn't got the right tyres. And there's no public transport. They've cancelled those wrong snow on uh, this country. I'm not going to make it in today, son, so um, I'll see you tomorrow, right, boy? Well, no, you're saying you'll see me mm. tomorrow. Yeah. But but you'll probably call up tomorrow with the same thing. Well, only no, if it's snowing still. No, listen, it might not happen. Well, I can't, I can't run a business like this, Bob. Yeah, it's not my fault, is it, really? So go round to Sheila's and, and like, slag me off if you want. But I'll tell you what, you're not coming back here. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> one chance. Give them one chance. Oh. Well, you didn't even give them one chance. No, because they'd done it before. <laughs> Just annoys me. <sighs> what is art? Um, it's a very broad term. It's a very difficult one as well. Well, let me throw that question over to uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, we were just trying to uh, clarify what art is. Uh, it's just something for your eyes to look at. Right, it's, right. it's just a change from the norm, isn't it? Um, mm. I mean, that's why I think most people have it. But then... The problem is, I'd, I'd never buy a piece of art. I don't see the point in buying something, because I know that my eyes will get bored of it eventually. Right. Have you got much art in your house? Yes. Have you? Because it gives me pleasure, and it don't, I don't get tired of it, I don't get bored of it. Do you look it. at it every day? Well, it's there, isn't it? It just adds pleasure Yeah, but other things are there. Dust it. is there, but... Surprisingly, I've not compared I think art I've, I've to looked, dust uh, as often as I perhaps should. <laughs> but... Um, the thing about, uh, and this I think may be intriguing to you, uh, Damien Hirst, of course, is more of a conceptual artist like Tracy Emin, and a lot of what contemporary art does is followed on from a guy called Marcel Duchamp, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh. Now, he famously, he famously took a gentleman's white urinal like you'd find in a pub toilet, and he put it on its side, and he signed it with a fake name, and he put it in an art gallery. Now, he did that in about 1917, perhaps a bit later. It, I, it just annoys me because there'll be snobby people who haven't got a clue, and they're looking at that and they go, "Oh yeah, I see what he's trying to say." Well, that might make them think they might. Damien Nurse, inter- I don't, I, I don't feel angry with Damien Nurse really because right. he's getting away with it. But why does that annoy you? Because it's people falling into the trap. Damien Nurse, before he dies, I bet he goes, "What a laugh that was." I had everyone on. There's a very good point as well because some people think that the greatest art form of uh, the last hundred years is marketing. Yeah. Some people say that that is his art, that it's not good enough to do it. You've got to then get away with it. And if art, if the point of art is to inflame, I don't think anything inflames people more than the discussion about whether something's art or if someone's taking the piss or if someone gets 50 million for something, do they deserve it? Is it worth a hospital? Well, what do you think? What do you think of the shark in a tank? I, I, I think I was blown away by it. I, I thought, thought I'd never seen this like yeah. it before. It was sort of spectacular because it is so huge and so vast. And to have put a shark, you know, in formaldehyde and to have hung it in an art gallery, it's very striking when you see it. Yeah, it's it a is. remarkable achievement. We, but we, what we is he? Is he an a... artist or a fishmonger? <laughs> they, what he's done, anyone could have done what he did. Yes, but not everyone did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting point that you raise. It's the same old point you always <laughs> raise. Not anyone could have done it. That's always the same point you make. Anyone could have done but, it. Carl, but they didn't you do it. You could say the same about Michelangelo. Is he an artist or a painter and decorator? Well, it hasn't caught on, has it? Like the crying boy photograph. No one's having them in their house. No one's gone, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen the new trend, the shark in the tank? I'll have no one's got the room. No one wants it. And that, to me, shows you what's popular. At the end of the day, if everyone wants one, he's got to be good, hasn't it? But I think if people were given a chance to appreciate more sophisticated things, then 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 they would. And I just think that that's I think that's true in all walks of life. You, you know, it's it's an acquired taste, and the best things are an acquired taste. I mean, I haven't got pictures in in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I mean, it's tiny. You've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other. 
mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so there's no nowhere space there. For art. There's no no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's the, where's the where's the sofa? At home. Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night. Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting. Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. It does. The picture no, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable every fucking day. No, no, honestly, it's it's good to because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything, so I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself. No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up, and if Suzanne sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> So, why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you, don't, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward, I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Look no, back she, at you we're, we're used to it. That's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room in a way. Like, <laughs> and they're further away. There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use... It doesn't matter. Your Sorry, eyes, remember why your eyes wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, you know, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head, Stephen <laughs> Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> so I can look forward, she's sat next to me. If, if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now, she's getting the sound from me still because she's sat close. Yeah. But, yeah, we're further away, but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> So that's how you managed to you keep are, this relationship alive. You are yeah, just, you're such an odd little man. But you no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on on the estate who who did use. Have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. I'm going to tell you ages ago. It's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's push bike, pedal bike. Yeah, like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> cycle about what yeah she was known as miss piggy anyway <laughs> oh is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman yeah, yeah that's it anyway well the way she used to communicate she used to always going quick saving nick biscuits and if anyone went up to her to say stop nicking the biscuits she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag and she'd look in it but talk to you via the mirror <laughs> What, what, what? This so she was insane. It's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like it used to scare me. It's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. It's really, really so, weird. So hang on, so she used to talk to people through the mirror because she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No. That's weird. No, that would Why? be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. Oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, it, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are... It gives you confidence? Of, well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more and you pick up what habits you do and stuff like that. So what have you changed through your viewing uh, of yourself? I, I, I sort of grew, grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> Sculptures. What do you think of sculptures? I mean, because that's something that really is getting into the, the 3D world there, isn't it? No longer do you have to represent something as 3D. You can make something. You know, is it, you know, the statues are, are amazing, aren't they? They're clever, aren't they? I mean, um, they always look the same. Well, that's not true, is it? Because recently there was a, a quite a controversial one, a huge one in London... Uh, the pregnant uh, uh, thalidomide woman. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thoughts? I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wouldn't be room, because it would just be you, Suzanne, and a pregnant thalidomide watching telly. I, d I, d I don't know what he was trying to say. It's, uh... Maybe she was saying, OK, we've had the human form. This is an example of the human form. Yeah, but do you think she started off trying to do normal? And it was like, oh, chipped a bit off. <laughs> <laughs> she, one of the arms got chipped off. Well, it, off. it makes you wonder, doesn't it? 
And why, you see that, that square, Trafalgar Square, oh. you, you've got that. Nelson's column, he's got one arm and a leg missing or something and a patch over his eye. Then you've got the thalidomide. Why can't they just do a full person? <laughs> That, that was what they saw. That was what the artist saw. It's, a, it's about confronting us with certain preconceptions of what, that, what we expect of the human form, what we expect of sculpture. And it's probably a little ironic comment as well on the famous Rodin. It's been wrapped up with all kinds of ideas of maternity, of the human form, of what sculpture is. Why wouldn't you put that in a big public place? But what about the subject? Did you think, who's that subject? Who is that woman? No, not really, because the Lidomides are around and we, we've, we've all seen one. It's not like a shocking, a shocking image. It's one of life's little things that it chucks out. There's some out there. Amazing. So it's, not, it's not shocking, is it? I don't understand what you mean. I think what I thought is it just goes to show we're sort of running out of, of ideas. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it or they try and destroy it? Uh, Do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> Angel in the North, that's a bit of art, but it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You're driving along a miserable motorway. Yeah. Oh, what's that over there? It gives you something for your eyes to look at again. Motorways are, are the most boring place to drive. Mm. But you go, oh, look, there's a, there's a bit of art over there. Yeah, but, Stick that but then again, should you be looking at art when, you, when you're when you going at 70 miles an hour along a motorway? Well, yeah, because it's really big. You can keep your eye on it and... and look in know, the mirror. You can, you can. It's not a problem. Wait till you go past it and look in the mirror like normal. What? So you like the Angel of the North? Because it's, it's, it's something in the middle of nothing. Right, but if you put it somewhere else... Stick it in Trafalgar Square, you'd go, oh, more clutter. <laughs> I remember we uh, we were shown uh, the cartoon version of Animal Farm when we were about like 15, 16. We were discussing it afterwards about oh yeah, the podium. oh yeah, great, oh yeah, communism versus oh the poor proletariat and all this. And this bloke went, "You lot make me sick." It was just a nice film about some animals. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What, what's your take on that, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, go on. What's your point? Because you I can see the irony there, can't you? I haven't, I haven't seen it. No. Uh, if you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I disagree with that because um, I think um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could... And I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Shinder's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving. Couldn't you? Schindler's List in space. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Piggy's Choice. Well, have we talked about that. What? About things like that in in art as well. Do you think that that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, like like films do, things like the Holocaust and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, lives and dies. Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did you pick? I, th I don't. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this you... is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is... this is like deal, no deal. It's kind of you down to the last, <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you going to go for? Oh God. <laughs> But why did you ask which one did she choose? Because <laughs> even if he'd said the names, Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it because that you've then said... I'd ask more, I'd ask more then. If, if he said Alison, I'd go, well, what was it with Alison? That, what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do, you question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, what was going on there? Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ. That's because you've just watched Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah? Brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> what an extraordinary on, point. Go on, this is gonna be, he's going to follow this up, mate. He's going to follow this up. He's got something up. here. He's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then. What's your no, take on films? Films films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. 
And uh, you like one with a good story. I like. I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm. Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> Mission, Impossible <laughs> Mission Impossible Two. <laughs> these are your. These are the, what you consider the great works no, I'm of film. I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen yet. You always say, "Oh, have you seen so and so?" Well, Mission it. Impossible One. <laughs> And there's good news for you. Three's out. <laughs> That's true. One of the most striking art exhibitions that I ever attended, Carl, was an exhibition of outsider art. I'm something I'm sure you're very familiar with. Outsider art, of course, is work that is made by people who are often institutionalised for mental health problems, um, or they are just incredibly, you know... Uh, that people who aren't in any way part of the art establishment. Well, they're all, right up to psychopathic murderers. Uh, clinically insane mass murderers would count as outsider art. Um, I, I went to an outsider art exhibition in New York. Um, it was incredible. And I bought a, a, a painting of this guy. He's a, a, a chronic schizophrenic. And he paints in tar, like road tar, mm. that he gets from roads and he paints in that on wood he finds in sort of skips. And it's incredible, because it's sort of like scratched in, and uh, it's amazing, and there's this thing of Jesus being helped down off the cross. Um, admittedly, I was walking around there going, this is fucking mental, and James was going, you've got to stop saying that. Because, of course, some of the people are mental. <laughs> and there was one bloke doing the sculpture of a skull, right? <laughs> and underneath... <laughs> It was like a little head with his teeth. Underneath, he put a sign that said real teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get the real teeth from? <laughs> what I think is interesting about that is how much therapy it provides for these often mentally unstable people, which is another important value of art, of course. People's self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> you whistle. Uh, yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? So right, freedom. expand on this point, if you would. Well, that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. That's great, that. For art is freedom. I yeah. love that, because I think, I think you've really hit on something there. Would you would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, I know what he meant. I know what he meant there. Would you include I mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to. I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, uh, what, uh, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So Not just take us off. through a typical See, uh, day. When would the whistling begin? So, so uh, this was the, you spent you spent <coughs> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking, I'm in my own place now, I'm going to annoy them. Well, it was mainly, it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble. Mm. And they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> um, You've got boiler problems down in the you got it, well. work, it works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> And what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going from one thing to another. A wedley? And a, a man was impressed. She was like, oh, you can whistle, can't you? I was going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you go? I was just doing all different levels. Sorry, this sounds like a scene from One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. The boy is setting off the radio. I can whistle. Oh, you're a good whistler, aren't you? Oh, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home. It when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you mm. never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up. You, whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a Well, whistle. the people who aren't whistling are usually pissed off. But yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least, he, he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling.
we can, there's, there's, there, there, there's no point in whistling. No, there, there is. No, there's I, not. I don't know. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as, like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh. Retired. <laughs> Well, because he couldn't whistle. That was it. It was like well, yeah, he whistles whistle. all the time. Can't whistle. Well, yeah. Can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth. Yeah, I suppose he could have done. Didn't think of that. What about a flute or a recorder? Not London's burning again. Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off. <laughs> he didn't really think this through, did he? He retired at the age of twenty-eight, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and his whole family with, were bankrupt <laughs> with no teeth. Yeah, and just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why are you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling, the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No, I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. What, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? Oh, two hours. Fuck two hours? Out. Put my word down. And and then... this, sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear it. Can we hear it? So you were, whistling, is... you were whistling after you had your go as oh, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. That is Carl's self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, cos I do all right. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can come oh, up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't... No, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that I, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree, cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth ten, Matt. It's not bad, is it? Now, I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you... I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out? And then, yeah, when it wasn't I go, just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Christ, Anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby, maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here. But I think there's a difference between Beethoven and... <laughs> squirm. <laughs> there's a cue in that. <laughs> Robert Nozick did this thing that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible, you did exactly what you've always wanted. You became the person you wanted to be, you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference. So it was your life, okay? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no no loved ones dying? So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. Am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary, but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation tank Right, uh, and your one proviso was, are munches as good? <laughs> yeah, No, absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic, You've got to yeah. pre-program your life. That's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just, if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them. You are the... You're the... It's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're living it. That. bit dangerous, Sorry? bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, Why? Just, um, I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about Ah, oh, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in, because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, the things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. So never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day.
But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't. You're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't. Know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life, and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. Well, you just have munchies every day and. Well, yeah, he's getting it then. He's getting it. If you if you don't know you've got in this tank, if I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out. Uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day. We'll go and do something nice. And right, you're meant to be at work. She goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right, go, all right, let's go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life you could do anything and you chose the exact life you've got now except Suzanne's got a day off now I both love that well I was a bit suspicious though that she's just taking a day off no way really. it's not happening now it's not happening really happening you could do anything you like but I like the fact now you're even questioning you're not in the tank and why has Suzanne got a day off right <laughs> now I love that because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice happy satisfied whatever you want to do it contented person who's got the perfect life however it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities for example you wake up, there's the munchies, sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Oh, she goes off. to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought of that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, got no, some munchies for breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't, you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti, yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet. I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right? Okay. So anticipation, yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it? Then looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay, well, right. can I ask a question because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea, okay? You can design your perfect life. But I'd prefer not to well, know I'm doing it. No, you, you don't, don't you know. Won't. But you I want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munches. What else? We've got, got munches, munches and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life, of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, I, I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, just, I just think you need you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British Gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes." The, the, oh my God! The boiler so is fixed. Like so his boiler's fixed. No, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but you it gets fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler. You can be the perfect temperature. But this isn't the the anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But you in won't realise. It won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got no, a problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right, that is your problem hole. So, if someone comes up and they go, I fixed your boiler. Sorry, could I just ask no, one No, let, let him speak. Let me ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for... You, no, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole... Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yes. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on. Right. So it's better to have... You've got a problem hole in your head. Right. Yeah. So you stuff in a problem Problems. into the problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now, all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. <laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but that's not true, is it? The problem hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky! Let uh, him explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say his problems... Uh, and not even problems. Well, how big's his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. 
<laughs> right, but why, Shut why, up. Let what, him but, speak. He's but, just uh, expanding on his idea. Why but do what you is keep his drudging? problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little skittles? Loads of problems. You, you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing <laughs> loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. It is. And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a it's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's, ball... No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me ask... <laughs> I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem ball, <laughs> down the problem tube, into the, bounce, problem bounce into the problem gene. Into, right, now then. Now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just... Can ladies have a pair of problem balls? No, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls, is my question to you. But, and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's. Or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you right. could have you could you, have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you went, it, if you, okay, no, 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 suppose I came to you and said, listen, well, um, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country he might have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it, and I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole, and he, and 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 hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first? Is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right. He'd say, right. Take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right. I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish. He would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball. Would. Wouldn't he? Well, well, he'd, well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger in the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay. So, so Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> What do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it, it's after. It's like that holiday, when I what was on holiday. What do you mean, holiday. you don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it, it's after? What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like the holiday, I've just So you enjoy coming on, off holiday? What? No, I want to hear it, you, you enjoyed the holiday, you didn't when, enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is the stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now, you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it, because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah. I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much they give you, because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now, I have the lamb chops, it comes with extra veg. I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed... You can only so get packed so much... Enjoy if you're enjoying all, all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that... Point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you but you didn't want a pudding, or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and then it's it's. Yeah, but what's, it. I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal. You had some lovely lamb chops. You enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had a, a, like profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought I fancy a couple of them. Yeah, and, and then the, and the chance has gone. I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant. Yeah, now, but you haven't missed a chance. You had the chance. You didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's what's not like the problem? you didn't. I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> Right. Now, the, th the problem was, Go I was on. enjoying it, but I thought, this is this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day night when I knew that it's the gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So I'd go, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! But then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely spiciness and the sausiness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you... Go on. Auntie Nora, I've told you she prepares all her food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, 
Now, she, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm -hmm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks I got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Dunno. Just want the same. She was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. he's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you never Someone know says, one. well, it depends. So do you have anything twice ever? Maybe not. But this is insane, Carl, well, because no aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that that not only the, what is that, that is on Monday, yeah. what are you going to do on Thursday as well? Make, that, I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> <at> the food <laughs> diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life now. <laughs> exactly. To go, right, oh, fucking well, hell. Well, what else gonna, you say But to then he's people. phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls that week. Well, it's just Just read a journal. Now, the question is, is it better to to enjoy something once and not again, then not at all. But you're an what idiot because you you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing. I did the boxing. I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm. That is it. I think that's what but, it is. But, but that's what I'm saying, though. I soon get bored. And that's it's like how you enjoy... You know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than... Well, that doesn't make sense. That goes totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's surely so your favourite. No, so, hold on. Not. So, if you were to have one munchie... I'll right, go ahead as a munchie, mate. You no. go, I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, but what is... Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one, and then I'm going to get a taste for them, and I'll, I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? Oh, I'll Do keep you... them, then. Forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I'd prefer, I'd prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you, <laughs> enjoy, the okay, why do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry, but not the second curry. But you know curry. it's the last one. Because it's, no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about 12 in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> <best>. <laughs> you shove the first four in! Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm yeah. eating. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, last what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. It? Yeah. So, hold on, though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly, then? Not as often as you think. Well, I don't know. Well, well, no, I, don't I think, I don't know. So, tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after, a, sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies. And the same experience. You yeah, like the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr just from my own experience, working for summer does feel better because you've got a, you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah, I genuinely believe that. But you need you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus. No, but, it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what no, I'm saying metaphorically, is, what what's the like, Yeah, well I'm actually I'm named what Revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the Revel you like is raisins? There. Go on. Well, well, maybe, if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? Uh, 
When I watched him fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted, did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most of the oh, kids were. God, it's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> yes, because they look at it. They go, "Can you fix it for me to go into space?" No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah. So that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in because. Whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered-down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One thing. Just one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fucking hell! It's unbelievable! (laughs) I mean, it's extraordinary. (laughs) There is no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. That, that doesn't work either, because like then well, I, not, told, Brett? Because I told okay. me I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> oh, it's amazing! So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> when I was on holiday recently, yeah. I got talking to an old fella, because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm-hmm. Um... I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had um, that sort of um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans. Oh yeah. Which is always sort tell, of. Tell tell sign. It's it's kind of like he's got money. Yeah. And um, the uh, red jeans are twice as much there. That's okay. I've got money. Yeah. It's sort of it's either that colour or yellow. But you yeah. can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think yeah he's got a few. Oh, I'm a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir. They're no one... the most expensive ones. Yeah, they're, they're in the back room. Um, uh, could I just see your your bank account first? There is. Oh, yeah, you can afford yellow jeans, right, sir? Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now, I was chatting to him for about ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Mm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. Uh, so he's rich. So you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on. Oh, he had a shirt and his his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants, and he okay. just went over. Well, and I, don't a I don't know why did you notice his, what um, kind of the crotch area was. What? Why did you notice what you were looking the, for much at the eyes? I, I the can culture. see why you could see if you're looking at his face, you could see a white shirt. But why could you see you why. what colour this is what the I'm telling fabric you. around his this testicles were? You saw a good-looking old man sat at the bar. You went up and bought him a drink. Right? Yeah, you, oh, so, you I was noticed for the, the barbecue to open. Right. right. Okay. And you I got noticed there the man. So you, <laughs> you noticed so the man's trousers. No. Yeah. No. I was annoyed. I don't like late nights on holiday. Okay. Jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40-odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at 8. Well, you're so noticing I have to wait people, for you're minutes. noticing old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but get your I'm story saying, straight. What I'm saying to you is, the reason right. I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about, right. there was no reference points. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. Even what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, yeah. is, is reference points. I had no idea and what, what was he was going talking on about. When you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it... Above the waist. Keep it... Uh, Looking at his bollocks. Keep it... Erect. To- <laughs> 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 I, was, I made Carl laugh. <laughs>